Welcome our people. Good to see everyone this morning and I'm going to bring my sisters to the platform. Welcome to the program. sisters we are live and direct and uh, we want to welcome everyone once again to our program we thank her um, our topic today is uh, a background to the president Trump's June 2nd 2020 executive order on advancing international religious freedom um, I think we send out some information regarding this we have a special guest that is coming to give us even better insight the person that was part of this executive order, the person that was uh, instrumental to getting this order signed. So thank you guys so much. My name is Mona Ching Saga and I reside here in Houston, Texas. We are the Daughters of Truth and I have my sisters here with me. I will have them to introduce themselves. Sisters, please go ahead. Good morning, everyone. My name is Augusta Nosike. I reside in uh, Richmond, Texas. And as usual, we're here to open the minds of our people on things that matter to our struggle. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Augusta. And then I have my wonderful sister in Kentucky. Sister April, please go ahead. Good morning, everyone. My name is Eputos Namadi Begi Simon Okube. I reside in Lexington, Kentucky. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any uh, disclaimers before we get started? Oh, uh, well, we always know that this show is adult show. Um, it's for adults, you know, if not just by age. If, if you're 50 years or 60 years, but you don't raise it like an adult, you're not able to critically think. Um, this show might not be for you. And if you think that you're educated, and um, I was listening to someone, he said that um, education doesn't mean that you are able to think. It just shows what the schools that you have, you know, certificates just shows the schools that you have attended and um, uh, the certificates they gave you when you attended them doesn't mean that you are not like a very superhuman being or whatever. So if you're not using the education, that you, the certificates that you acquired, the knowledge that maybe when you went through school, you just went there and memorized and, and wrote exams and got certificates, you're not able to apply what you have studied in class. This show might not be for you because it might be too much for your mental capacity. So um, we welcome all the free thinkers. We welcome Christians especially. We welcome those that have been killed. We welcome those that love justice. We welcome those that love love and love peace. Come and discuss with us and we'll get solutions to our common problem. Thank you. Thank you, sister, for that wonderful disclaimer. So again, our topic today, as I mentioned earlier, we have it posted on our um, on our uh, platform there. It's called a background to President Trump's June 2nd, 2020 executive order on advancing international religious freedom. So of course, we're going to start off with tradition. We all know that nothing happens by itself. It takes people to make things happen. So we want to show you how this executive order today connect to the solution to the continuous massacre of Christians and the ethno-religious genocide in Nigeria. In the weeks that followed the June-July 2009 International Religious Freedom Ministerial Roundtable in Washington, we all saw this video going around. There was a formal letter of June of, of January 27, 2020, signed by 118 organizations, mostly U.S. evangelicals. Please pay attention to that mostly U.S. evangelicals and other stakeholders, and 33 individuals pushing for the appointment of a U.S. special envoy to Nigeria and the Lake Chad Basin. This effort has yielded the expected result. Now it is time for us to listen and hear what we can do to contribute to the solution rather than creating more problems with propagandas. So, this Augusta, go ahead. Yes, um, the, there will be a clip that Sister Mona is going to play, and the following clip is the presentation to the Western Conservative Summit of 2019. One of the main champions of this campaign, and a former U.S. Assistant Secretary for Defense, Frank Gaffney, who is also president of Save the Persecuted Christians, 
beams the searchlight on causative factor of Sharia ethnic religious supremacists and the imperative of holding the individual and institutional perpetrators, the persecutions and killings accountable, including their collaborators and facilitators. So Sister Mona is going to show us uh, that clip. You just uh, pay attention. Sister Mona, go ahead. One is I have met Well you some of the grace of God It's great to be back and the great late for two reasons Armstrong, One is I have managed through the grace of God and the, and the great, great late and, and much lamented Bill Armstrong Western the but great, still with us, leader, John Jeff Andrews, Hunt, and the great and emerging, the not only Central. Western, but national the conservative leader, I'm Jeff Hunt, to be, to be unbroken in my record here at the Western Conservative Summits. Here two years ago. The second reason I'm just thrilled to be back is that something very momentous happened to me personally here two years ago. I think is best As is my want, I had the opportunity to talk a bit at that time about the threat from what I think is best described as Sharia supremacism, must be imposed a toxic totalitarian Islamic code that its adherents believe Allah has dictated must be imposed on the whole world through whatever means are necessary. I one of left the stage, went back, and suddenly Hanna, two Coloradans were ministering to right there. His and one of them was Lebanon, Father Andre Mahana, his who cannot be with us today because he is ministering to his flock Eden in Augustus his native Lebanon. Joined him with me to but his partner at the time and my partner these days, Didi Logason, joined him with me to talk about the persecution of Christians the cause, and the imperative need that, uh, to do something about it. Didi is joined by her youngest of six sons doing her part for the cause. That uh, his name is Fred, and we're very glad to have him with us because uh, we're going to share with you one of the things that early on in this effort came out of our shared interest in seeing if we could, in fact, help save the persecuted Christians. Because, as you may know, being way above average, it is simply mind boggling. This problem is By of estimates, such a magnitude, such a gravity, that it is simply mind-boggling. By some estimates, 300 million Christians are suffering from persecution around the world today. Are suffering what has been and by, again, some estimates, as many as 245 million of them are suffering what has been characterized as severe banishment from persecution. Their and the loss of their property, that means torture. That means, that means rape. That means enslavement. That means and yet the banishment from their homes and the loss of their property. That means murder, are, if you sometimes on a it, genocidal scale. And yet, while the numbers involved than just or if you think about it in historical terms, even more staggering than just those sheer Joseph facts would Stalin, describe. Mao Zedong, Pol Pot, combined. Adolf Hitler, didn't kill as many Joseph Stalin, as have Mao Zedong, been put under combined persecution in our time.
Dee Dee Logason, at the western end of the exhibit hall, there is something you must see. We call it our People of the Cross exhibit. You cannot fail to be moved by this, ladies and gentlemen, because it tells you in very explicit terms about the many places in the world, and this is just a sample, frankly, the many places and the many ways in which Christians are being persecuted. Please check it out. Check out with Didi and the team that is supporting us, including Fred, what you can do to get your hands on these panels, these displays, and take them to places in your own communities, whether they're churches or community centers, places of business, or another venue, where you too can help us spread the word about what is happening to these Christians. We estimate that by some grace of God, again, 50,000 or so people in this country in some 10 states, many of them here in the West, have now seen this exhibit. That's not nearly enough, but it's a start. And with your help, it could be considerably more. But at the end of the day, the fact that there are 245 million Christians that are being persecuted severely today is the worst because last year, according to Open Doors USA, the number was 30 million less. So the trend is in the wrong direction, so more must be done. We are trying, as an organization, Save the Persecuted Christians, with banners like this, which you can display as well outside of your churches or homes, or businesses, to do something additive to the praying, additive to the relief efforts, added to the awareness raising. What? To hold the persecutors accountable for what they're doing, to impose costs on them for what they are doing. To change, in other words, the calculations that obviously many of them operate under, that they can do this sort of thing to Christians worldwide with complete impunity. That must not be allowed to remain an operative presumption. Now, we've been working with the government we have, I'm incredibly grateful to say, a president in Donald Trump, a vice president in Mike Pence, a secretary of state in Mike Pompeo, a national security advisor in John Bolton, and an ambassador at large for international re religious freedom, Sam Roundback. Leaders of our country who are powerfully convicted about the need to do something about this. And yet it still is difficult to get government to hold persecutors in other countries' governments accountable. We're trying. Just this past month, we sponsored with friends in our Save the Persecuted Christians Coalition from Nigeria, a magnificent delegation of persecuted Nigerian Christians who came and spoke to our leaders, both in the executive branch and in the legislative branch. They addressed the Heritage Foundation, a magnificent program. Look it up online. Also the media, and yet, at the end of the day, the effect of their visit was Mike Pompeo, excuse me, Mike Pence, the vice president, did summon his counterpart from Nigeria for what I call a come to Jesus meeting. But the next day or so, the embassy of Nigeria was denouncing our friends from Nigeria and saying there's nothing to it. So let me leave you with this thought. There's one other thing we believe we can do. And we started doing it a month, two months ago now with a letter to the enablers of the persecutors, firms like Squire Patton Boggs, a big law firm doing business in this city, among other places. Indeed, Didi Logason led a religious freedom rally at their office on Wednesday. Hold firms like Squire Patton Boggs accountable for representing communist China, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Cameroon, and the Palestinian Authority. They're on the wrong side. This ministerial meeting next week that Mike Pompeo is convening is a perfect opportunity to stand with the persecuted and against the persecutors. Join us in this fight. Save the persecuted Christians.org. God bless you all. Go forth and multiply. Thank you.
all right so we are done with the video uh, I don't know what transpired I was here trying to manipulate the thing to work <laughs> hopefully I got some information that it was not working that it did work um, I don't know so um, listeners you can help us you can help us by letting us know if I need to replay this video or not so I hope you guys got the information uh, that we wanted to convey from this video since I will let you go ahead to okay okay so um any responses as to whether the video played well did they listen did they come out through I haven't gotten any yet but so go ahead okay so go ahead you see on this platform we don't do propaganda we tell you as it is because by the grace of god we have been positioned in a place of privilege you know that we can have certain information and know something not they say they say we'll show you as we do if you listen to um uh, the, that clip you clearly hear key names that were mentioned in this campaign president donald trump you heard that? Vice President Mike Pence, Secretary of State, United States Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, the National Sec uh, Security Advisor, John Bolton, Ambassador at Large for International Religious Freedom, Sam Brownback. These are part of the evangelical Christians in America that understand the importance of life and religious freedom. They have to push and lobby for these actions by the United States government. You see, American Christian activists have also always played a role in liberation, in freedom, because that's what Christianity stands for. True Christianity stands for freedom. Freedom of everyone, not just for freedom of Christians. Freedom of everyone, every human. So if I know that American Christian activists also play the role major role like that in the abolition of slavery in america now they are pushing towards religious freedom all over the world at least in nations that have some sort of dealings with america because america cannot be using taxpayers money to fund people that are killing other human beings so they are pushing for religious freedom you see if you're whatever you're practicing whatever religion you're practicing if what is teaching you is how to kill others and rule over them the world does not need that type of religion you should keep it in your bedroom the religion that we want in 2020 is the one that my people will say live and let live as you practice whatever you're practicing you you allow your neighbor to do whatever your neighbor wants to do because your freedom, where your own freedom ends, is where your neighbor's own starts. Where your right ends is where your neighbor's own starts. So you must respect others. You must accommodate others' belief. You see, these uh, uh, American Christian um, activists uphold the fact that all men are born equal. And no one should massacre or be massacred because of what he or she believes. This is what Christians all over the world, especially Africa, should be pushing for as well. It's one thing for somebody to be trying to help you, but you need to help yourself as well. We must say no to all forms of supremacism. Sharia, Fulani, white supremacism, even Igbo and gender supremacism. It, it, it is not allowed. You, 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 in, in the way God created, in 2020, people should begin to learn that before God, we are all equal. No black, no white, no male, no female. Just one beautiful human race. That is what God intended. Enough of all this superiority complex madness everywhere. All men are born equal and so deserve mutual respect, love and justice. This is thing that everybody must understand. Christians in Africa need to understand that they do not need to die before they can join the kingdom of God. Anybody that is teaching you that as a Christian, that when you die is when the kingdom of God starts in your life, is not teaching you Bible. The kingdom of God begins here on earth. 
That is why Christ came to die. If Christ came to die for us to be free, then we need to be free. Otherwise, his death is wasted. So if you believe that Christ died for your salvation, I want you to know this morning that he also died for your freedom. He died so that the kingdom of God can come here on earth. So why are you dying? Why do you think it's okay for you to just sit down and die every day? Because you're a Christian? Why do you allow yourself and your children to go through tough things, through pain, through sorrow? When you know you can easily unite and form a formidable force. Why are you so weak? How come it took the Christians in America to fight for you? Why are the Christians in America not being beheaded? Is it not the same Christianity? Is not the same heaven you want to go to? You see, we must begin to view Christianity differently, especially in Africa, if we must survive as a people. Christianity does not mean docility and gullibility. That's not what the meaning of Christianity. The spirit of Christ is the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of Christ is the spirit of boldness and power. Do not allow any pastor who is already living in heaven on earth to tell you that you need to wait and receive your own heaven when you die. It is said that life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to what happened. It is time for power to be returned to the people. We are the people. And if you are a Christian, know that power, that Christ died, that you might receive power. And that power, you should be able to exercise it here on earth to liberate yourself, liberate your families, liberate your children, liberate generations of born. That is the essence of being a child of God. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Queen. Sister Augusta, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Sister Queen, for that. So I'm going to go ahead and read the Trump's executive order on advancing international religious freedom that puts the Fulani invasion machinery in Nigeria on a head-on collision with the National Security Machinery of the United States. And this is the explanation that Amazi Tony Nadi did, and he wrote this down on June 5th, 2020. Remember, this executive order was signed on the 2nd of June, 2020. Now, let me go ahead and read. Hopes are high that the end may be in sight for the ethno-religious killings and Fulani invasion going on in Nigeria. This is as <laughs> President Trump, Donald Trump, on June 2nd, 2020, signed an executive order on the advancement of international religious freedom. This executive order in which President Trump described international religious freedom as a national security imperative and a foreign policy priority for the United States sets timelines for when definitive steps would have to be initiated for requisite actions by various departments of the United States government. In number one, countries of particular concern Two, countries on the U.S. special watch list. Three, countries in which there are entities of particular concern. Four, countries that have engaged in or tolerated violations of religious freedom. It is noteworthy that Nigeria features prominently in the four specified categories of the countries targeted by this executive order, being that, one, Nigeria got on the U.S. special watch list for gross infractions on religious freedom in December 2019 and was subsequently moved into the category of country of special concern. Two, Nigeria is cited as hosting two of the top four most deadly global terror organizations, namely Boko Haram and Fulani X-Men, as well as ISWAP, which emerged as the West African franchise of ISIS since 2014. Three, the federal government of Nigeria and the armed security forces of Nigeria have been repeatedly cited for not only tolerating religious violence, but for actively colluding with the perpetrators of killings and other associated violence. It will be recorded that the August-September 2019 visitation and report of the U.S. Special Rapporteur on Nigeria regarding widespread extrajudicial killings in Nigeria 
reached a damning verdict that Nigeria's constitutional arrangements were like a pressure cooker for injustice, which now posed a grave danger to the global community unless addressed expeditiously. The continuing onslaught of the murderous Fulani invaders in the Middle Bear territories of Nigeria, as well as the massive influx of suspicious looking Fulani migrants from the far north into southern Nigeria during the country wide COVID 19 lockdown imposed and enforced by the federal government of Nigeria are clear pointers to the aforementioned federal government and security forces collusion with the perpetrators of violence. With the executive order coming just ahead, the impending constitutional force major, the LNC and its eminent alliance partners consider the signing of the order as a major breakthrough in the matrix of strategies already deployed by the alliance to contain and permanently halt the violent invasion of the homelands of indigenous nationalities of Nigeria, especially in the southern and middle belt territories of Nigeria by the murderous Fulani invaders, while the caliphate controlled federal government of Nigeria and its armed security forces looked the other way. It will be recorded that sequel the January 17, 2019, emergency press conference on Nigeria at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. You can see the link that it will be provided on our, our page. If you all want to read this, it will be provided on our page, okay? The LNC led presentations on the Nigerian situation at the International Religious Freedom Ministerial Roundtables between June and July of 2019 in the U.S. Congress on Capitol Hill where it dismantled the false narrative of farmers and elders clashes and also made a case for the appointment of a U.S. special envoy to Nigeria for the purpose of leading and coordinating U.S. response to the fast degenerating terror-driven security situation in Nigeria and the wider Lake Chad Basin. Current U.S. focus and policy actions on Nigeria are largely informed by these presentations made in the policy betways of Washington. One of the presentations dissected the complex security problems of Nigeria and the Lake Chad Basin and also advanced a comprehensive solution proposition under the title on governed spaces as breeding grounds for global terror. Another type, another one was titled Shifting False Narratives to Conceal Fulani Invasion. Jihad and land grab, land grab. For this watershed milestone, the LNC wishes to express its profound gratitude to Mr. Frank Gaffney and his team from the U.S. Center for Security Policy, particularly Ms. David Lungensen and Steve Enada, for their tenacity, invaluable guidance, and felicitation. The LNC also extends its gratitude to the indefatigable veteran congressman Frank Wolf for the immeasurable support it lent to the LNC in the push towards concrete U.S. actions or the International Religious Freedom Act, most deservedly named the Frank R. Wolf International Religious Freedom Act. For the years of his labor of love for potential beneficiaries of U.S. sanctioned religious freedom around the globe, including we who are currently trapped in the Distress Federation of Nigeria. As we eagerly await the appointment of a U.S. Special Envoy for Nigeria and the Lake Chad Basin. The LNC and its eminent alliance partners are confident that this executive order has set the stage for the resolution of the complex Nigerian situation. And this was written by Mazi Tony Nadi, the Secretary General of Lower Niger Congress on June 5th, 2020. All right, sisters, let's um, sister, move on. Thank you so much. So as you can see, the Nigerian constitution as it stands today is a danger to the entire world. We know that that constitution has the power, uh, has put immense power and wealth and resources into the hands of the most dangerous group of terrorists. Because of these dangers that we see in this constitution, we know there are three things, or we suspect there are three things that Americans are likely to do. They will anticipate genocide. They will try to stop it. They will hold accountable both, uh, both the perpetrators, their supporters, and those lobbying on their behalf against the victims and survivors of these genocidal attacks. Sanctions will be placed on these um, uh, service chiefs of these government agencies, their security apparatus for allowing this evil to go on for long. 
There is also the visa ban and the asset uh, confiscation for them, of course, and their family. And we are going to bring in our special guest to give us a little more insight on this matter. Uh, Mazi Tony Nadi, he's the one that's been working on this uh, issue tirelessly. So give us, uh, give me a minute so I can bring him in so he can give us some more insight. Thank you. I hope the audio is coming out okay, people. All right, while we are waiting for him to join in, Sister Kui, please go ahead and give us a little more insight, and we'll have him come in later. You're on mute. You have to unmute yourself. <laughs> Thank you. You know, um, like we're saying, like if our people will know, like we tell our people, we have some other videos that we have done in the time past. Uh, we have done the... Um, the implication of uh, Trump's executive order. There's a video in YouTube, in, in YouTube, Daughters of Truth, and it's there. So the implication is to tell you the things that will happen, like a summary of what uh, Sister Augusta uh, just read. We have also done the executive order proper. You know, the, 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 we read it out. There's a video there out there. You can still go and listen and get the full gist. We explained it. We read it in full and explained it. And then we also, um, Today, we are doing the background for you to understand what was done before we came into this executive order and other things that yeah, need to be done. So, it's just that people are not used to, for some time, our people are not able to go through process. They want things that you, I want to do it, I want it now, now, now. But we're beginning to teach our people something different. And on this platform, we have always told our people that nothing happens without somebody doing it. Things don't happen by themselves. Sister Mona said it earlier on. You begin, you have a problem. Human beings are faced with challenges and problems. But what you do is you evaluate the problem, analyze the problem, and say, okay, what are my options in solving this problem? Then you begin to solve it. And LNC has done that for the past 20 years. They looked at this problem, they broke it down into phases, and they began 20 years ago. This is the 21st year. And we are at the concluding phase of this project. So we don't want you running around, run, run to the left, run to the right. What do I do? Bring what out? Bring this in? No, 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 no. There's no need for that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Tony Nadi. We are uh, glad to have you here um, today. Because we like when you do say, we do say, show and tell. You know, we show you here. Yeah, that's what we do. We show. We don't tell you bamboo. We don't bamboozle your brain. You're welcome. Thank you. Mazam, with yourself. <laughs> right. Okay. Oh, welcome. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Right. Okay. So, in the last two episodes of our program, uh, yes. we had special guests from Yoruba land. You know, yes. Otumba, uh, she came to give us the Yoruba uh, perspective of what is yes. going on. We have also yes. brought our uh, middle belt uh, block, block, you know, of MNN Alliance to give us their own perspective, you know, uh, yes. the honorable that was here last week. Yes. And we are in this program, we're still going to bring our brothers, uh, Niger Delta, you know, yes. they're going to still come and give us their own perspective. First, to understand that we are, this is an all inclusive thing. And yes. uh, we all have shown the video clips of LNC um, extensive engagement in Washington, D.C. in 2019 on behalf of the MNN um, Alliance, which eventually culminated in the current U.S. focus and policy actions on Nigeria. Absolutely. As the Secretary General of uh, Law and Niger Congress and co-governor of the LNC, could you please lead our viewers into understanding the connections between LNC, MNN uh, uh, pursuits with the yes. U.S. policy actions, particularly this uh, President Trump's executive order of June 2nd, 2020. Um, okay, thank you. Um, again, I welcome viewers. Uh, I viewed uh, from the time you began. And, um, 
it's a loaded uh, question but uh, let me attempt to put them uh, you know apart so i can take them uh, one after the other the, the first thing is to understand uh, what lnc is and where the mnn alliance uh, comes in and how it connects with the u.s uh, policy actions on nigeria now that's uh, my understanding of your question the lower the lnc which is lower niger congress is actually uh, the aggregation of self-determination initiatives across the eastern half of southern nigeria that's the whole of uh, what you call the south south and the southeast coming together as ethnic nationalities that again the old uh, midwestern region and eastern region coming together but as ethnic nationalities that means the george or boni the anang the Efik, um sure you know uh some of our people these matters are matters of map there's no everything about uh, the subject matter we have at hand is uh it begins and ends with uh, maps the the lower niger uh like we have shown so many times is uh what we have here you know uh and what you see here are, you know the delineations the delineations of uh you know the the constituent components so you see the Igbo at the center area here you see the jaw here you see uh, the what became acquired from the anang the Afrik, and all of them and then the bini and the uh, rest of them in that area. so that is the lower niger the eastern half of uh, southern nigeria and uh, the lower niger congress is uh, the aggregation there was niger delta militancy going on agitation uh, for biafra going on the Igbo side at the time uh, we went uh, to uh, what the, 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 the civil rule in, in 1999, and um, in all of what in all of what had had been happening to Nigeria, including what became the civil war, you know these forces, the one the one that uh, Frank Gaffney described as uh, you know uh, Sharia supremacists. Mm -hmm. If we listen to Ojuku brokers in course of that war. You will, uh, you will notice the many times he made reference to the same forces. That is the Islamic uh, forces. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't Gawan. Uh, Gawan didn't know the head and tail of what uh, he was being used to, uh, uh, do, to, to achieve. And so these forces had always been there trying to overrun this entire space. Uh, the, what happened uh, in 66 was that the Igbo seemed to be the problem that they had more than any other problem because Igbo was all over the country. They were in the military, they were in the civil service everywhere. They were the businessmen, you know, everywhere. So it became uh, necessary to first get them out of the way. And systematically, since after that, uh, after that, getting the people out of the way, they began to get other people also, also out of the way, using one against the other. But at every point in time, whether it was Abiola that had to be put down, it was the same enemy that was coming at him. Whether it was Kensaru that had to be hung, it was the same Fulani coming at him. Whether it was a, a, a OD that had to be overrun, or, you know, all of what you see, and you see the one of middle belt. Whether it was Zango Kataf that had to be beaten down, or Zamani Lepo that had to be punished, or Beron people that had to be killed, or Southern Kaduna people that had to be wiped out, is the same, is the same enemy moving around. And how is that enemy? How has that enemy been able, able to do all of this against this large number of people? We began to probe. That's the Lower Niger Congress. I began to probe, and uh, we 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 came to to this to the finding that it was the constitutional instrument that empowered them in the present. Before now, before the coming of this constitutional instrument, it was the British that made the arrangements and empowered them. And so we trace all these matters from, from 1900 and even before, but let's take it from 1900 to 1914 to 1922 to 1946 to 1954. All those constitutions we hear about Littleton, McPherson, product of research. And we wanted, to, we wanted to get to the virus that was responsible for this, our ailment. And we're not alone in that ailment. All the people who are suffering from this uh, malady, you know, we went around there. So the Lower Niger Congress became the aggregation in the, at the time we were now ready to move we considered that looking back at what went wrong with biafra that we had to go back to all of those who are in our immediate uh, you know uh, region and uh, 
if we go back to this map, the, 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 this one that I first showed, uh, this is how it reflects uh, here. So we had to go back to all of those who are with us in this uh, part of the country, the George, the Anand, the Epic, the Goni, one after that, it took us six years. To the point in uh, 2009, when uh, there was sufficient uh, you know, buy-in for us to come public, all the while, in the 10 years leading to 2009, we were like we were operating like a submarine. Nobody mentioned Lower Niger Congress in public. But we were working with all the other people in this problem. At the time we were going to Pronaco, it was because we wanted a meeting of the whole country to leave the British aside and see whether we could work out what will uh, you know, become the constitutional basis of the union, since the one we had at independence got toppled since 1966. And everything that had happened to us in that time had been a matter of degenerating uh, this, uh, the, the forces that uh, toppled those constitutions. And let us be reminded, it wasn't erosy that uh, broke down, uh, that, that broke up the Federation of Nigeria. It was, it was Gowon via Decree Number 14 of 1967, May 27, 1967, the day the four regions became 12 states. That was the day Nigeria lost its uh, federation, its, its status as a federation. Before then, though there were military governors appointed, by the time the government of federation got toppled uh, by military intervention, those military governors were in charge of their in, in charge of their regions. All the from the from 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 the from the January of 1966 to the point where Ironsi was killed in July of 1966. That was the case. Even from that point in 66 where Erosi was killed, things remained, the four regions remained in charge of their assets until the July, until the July, uh, the, the, until the May of 1967. That means the Federation of Nigeria was tampered with for the first time almost one year after Erosi passed, after Erosi was killed. Erosi was killed 29th of July in 1966. The war that began uh, between uh, the Eastern Nigeria and the rest of uh, the federal government of Nigeria at the time began on the 6th of July in 1967. This alteration of the, of the structure of the federation happened on the 27th of uh, May in 1967. So those who want to revisit history to say that uh, decree number 34 of 1966 was the, was the point at which uh, the federation became uh, something else, no. All Iran did was to set up a military, a, a, an emergency uh, uh, government of uh, military and appointing governors to go and replace, uh, because the federal government of the time had been toppled, uh, they, they had been decapitated. The prime minister, the, the everybody that was in charge of everything had been killed by the soldiers who didn't get to government house. Iran just happened to be uh, the most senior. So why I had to go back to that uh, you know, little background is to tell us that uh, it was a matter of coming to a clear finding of what the problem was that the Lower Niger Congress, uh, you know, worked out with its associates, both in the immediate uh, Lower Niger uh, uh, region and the outer uh, balance of uh, the Nigeria, you know, for what could be done to solve the problem. And uh, by the time we called Pronaco in 2005, it was because we wanted everybody, all the nationalities, to come to the table. And everybody came. We had 164 ethnic delegations that came, including the Fulani. We had the Ijo coming as Ijo, the Yoruba coming as Yoruba, the Ogoni coming as Ogoni. And we, we sat around these matters for like two years, uh, sitting in plenary in Lagos, going to Podakot, going to Enugu, uh, going to Jos, going to Kano, and coming back uh, in Lagos uh, to conclude. All the armed groups, all the, all the groups in the country at the time who had become... Uh, sufficiently angry to carry arms against it. Asari and his uh, Niger Delta, Delta Volunteer Force, Kanye Adams and his OPC, we persuaded all of them to put their guns aside to come to see whether, you know, uh, the, the, the whole country will reject uh, the equity everybody was demanding because all the agitations were constitutional grievances being expressed. All the agitations are constitutional grievances being expressed, you know, either um, violently or, you know, in some rowdy way. And so, we, we, we tied it all up to say, let's go discuss. And we went discussing. We went finding answers. We wrote down those answers. 
and they became a draft constitution. Buhari was part of the Fulani delegation that came. The one that is Sultan now, Sayyid Abubakar, was part of the Fulani delegation that came. And so, back to what Lower Niger Congress is. Lower Niger Congress is the aggregation of the, you know, agitations, self-determination agitations across the eastern half of southern Nigeria, meaning uh, the south, south, and the southeast, as ethnic uh, nationalities uh, seeking self-determination. And the MNN, the Movement for New Nigeria, which is actually Movement for No Nigeria, because if you were to, if you were to see the map of that uh, New Nigeria, this is, this is the map of that New Nigeria. I'm sure many will agree with me that this doesn't look like Nigeria that will remain, uh, you know, one unit. Because uh, from the point, these uh, ones in this uh, upper part impose Sharia, the ones in the green belt here. From the point they imposed Sharia, uh, it became untenable to keep the union. And so the movement for New Nigeria was actually the enforcement phase of the decision of Pronaco. Pronaco decided to return everybody's autonomy to them. And if you if you were if you were if you if you want to understand what that meant, the question that was taken to Aburi in 1967, January 1967, were the same the questions were the same questions that were put before the ethnic nationalities. That was you could call Pronaco Abori too. But we have to mind our language. We call the, the same questions that the military uh, uh, governors and the head of state of the time, uh, the disputed head of state, that the Supreme Military Council went to have a meeting in Aburi to decide on the mechanisms for bringing back Nigeria as one federation. They agreed on everything, and one side came back, they dumped it, and began to kill people. And so, those same questions were the things, were the questions we put before these nationalities in Pronaco. And they found answers that uh, tally with uh, the answers that were found in Aburi. But now it was coming from the ethnic nationalities. And then there was nothing anybody could do about it anymore because it became a, a new consensus that we cannot be a federation without uh, people having their autonomy and control over their assets and their lives and everything that, uh, you know, uh, 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 that, that attached to our sovereignties. And so the point it became uh, something else was where instead of proceeding with that consensus, this, uh, this, uh, this Sharia belt continued to do things that uh, indicated that they were not willing to continue in the secular union we were building. They were not willing to continue the democracy we thought we were building, democratic union. They were not willing to, to, to be in a union where life would be sacrosanct. They, they were not willing to be in a union of equal partnership because uh, they also embraced a, feudal, a feudalist worldview in which uh, they tell us to our faces that they are born to rule us. So we now say to ourselves, all of us who are now facing that aggression from this part, that is the Middle Belt, the Lower Niger, and Yoruba, we say to ourselves, since we have agreed on what we could do to restore the union to be, uh, be back to being a federation, and this minority is refusing and telling us that they, are, that, they, that they now own all of us. They have imposed a constitution since 1979, which we had no impute into. And so we said, we, let's go on with what we agreed on. If, if, if we cannot find common ground, we are not going to submit our lives to be taken by them because that's what is that they've seized all the assets. Now they're killing people to take over their land. And so it's now a matter of how do we enforce that minimum minimal level of autonomy for everybody. And if we can't enforce it within the union, of course, somebody must provide an answer for Sharia and feudalism before we even go into the uh, uh, question of uh, what the terms of the union are we to remain in the union. All of us here targeted the constitution that uh, they imposed because that imposition is the reason why this minority have been presiding. They have all the guns in their hand. They have all the levers of uh, power in every possible way, even when they're not in government house. Because of the states they created and the council areas they created, we have a lopsided union where you saw when Jonathan was president, how they were molesting him all around. You saw when Obasanjo was president. As, 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 as much as he tried, they had always, uh, you know, some kind of way to be in charge of what would happen. If you, if you didn't agree with them, they would render the place unmanageable for you. And so we said, all of us banding together, rejecting that constitution, especially because our lives are now to be given up.
can take down that constitution and end the union with them. And so that became the business of the alliance. Those who are facing this uh, danger from this uh, Sharia supremacy are in that alliance. And so the, while the LNC is, uh, you know, uh, creating internal cohesion in the lower Niger area, the Yoruba took charge of their own space. You, you had a guest from uh, YWC. Uh, the Middle Belt took charge of their own space. But the three of us are working uh, in, 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 you know, in, in, a, in an alliance that will uh, take down that constitution and give everybody back their own land. Those who now want to carry on can go to another meeting. That is what that movement for New Nigeria is all about. And uh, in that setting, we've come to where we went to court in 2007 to afford Nigeria the opportunity to dismantle that constitution by, by discussion. We have all seen that we did not make the document and it is responsible for, the, for all of what has been happening to us. Every, every step of what we complain about flow from that constitution, whether it is the killings going on or the infrastructure that is gone uh, you know, uh, uh, crazy or the elections, you, 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 you try to elect somebody and they impose another, you have seen it anymore, or the matter of electricity that we can't have, or the matter of uh, the election, the, 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 the matter of, uh, you know, uh, even, even just being in charge of uh, our own uh, policing, the basic things. And so we said this constitution, we did not make it contrary to the claim in the preamble that we, the people, made it. That was what we took to court in 2007 after the pronouncement. In fact, that was the first you know, implementation step to, 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 to wind down that document so that we can now take the product of Pronaco to either a referendum or something, let something give way around that constitution. By the time we went to court, of course, the Attorney General of the time didn't have any, and he, he admitted our case in court. And what we wanted to show the whole world was that we did not make that constitution. We then began to act within that reality because they had no answer for us. Mm -hmm. we, we moved to the next step of asking everybody to go and make out their constitutions so that we don't uh, go from Nigeria to Somalia because we're trying to run away from uh, Nigeria. So that everybody can have their, their, their constitutions by which they can become countries of their own. So Yoruba was the first in 2012 to make out their own constitution because they are one language group. So it wasn't difficult for them to just dust up what they had before and said, if, if, if we can't all agree, Yoruba will take charge of his space. The next that, uh, uh, you know, got ready with all of it, because it was in 2011 that we came to that, uh, at the point in 2010, these same uh, supremacists said they were going to render the country ungovernable if Jonathan went on to contest to, uh, you know, to be president after serving out the tenure of Canada. It was that threat to make the country ungovernable that uh, led us to where we had another meeting to say, okay, let's wait. If Jonathan contests and wins and the country is being made ungovernable, then we'll tell them we can't be in the union since uh, none of us is qualified, since the constitution is not good enough to transmit power to anybody else than themselves. And so on the 30th of June in 2011, we went on a, you know, what we call the, the Lagos, uh, you know, the MNN Lagos Declaration, by which these three uh, blocks committed themselves to working out their salvation in terms of self-determination. We mandated everybody to go and make out their constitution and get ready for, you know, taking the same to referendum. We, 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 we explained to those who had to, who were not one language group, we, we gave everybody a formula for what they could do to go to bring all of those, uh, the Tiv and the Joko were at war, Tiv and the Doma, everybody was fighting with everybody in the middle of that area. So <laughs> we explained to them that if they did not stop that fight, the enemy would swallow them one after the other. And therefore they went ahead to create internal cohesion in their own, more than 100 language groups. They went ahead to create their own internal cohesion while we were doing our own uh, in the lower night. Uh, on, the, on the 27th of April in 2015, we went on uh, the, the Solomon Assembly in Port where we further mandated ourselves to work out a chart of relationships that will become the, the basis of constitution for uh, the, the lower Niger, the peoples of the lower Niger. By 2017, the Yoruba had come to their own Solomon Assembly, rejecting this constitution as basis of the union, the current uh, 1999 constitution as basis of the union, and uh, you know, uh, committing themselves to working their way to where they take their sovereignty back. 
on the 18th of July in, in 2018, the Middle Belt uh, did the same. And so, uh, having all repudiated that constitution at that level, where the people, because it was the organizations that were making the propositions, eventually it connected with the people, and the people began to act by themselves. For instance, the Solomon Assembly you saw in Polakot, it wasn't an LNC meeting, it was a meeting of the, the representatives of uh, the, the, the accredited delegates of, uh, you know, representing the various uh, nationalities. You saw the one in Ibadan. Their governors were all there, uh, their traditionalists, their rulers were all there, including the army of Ife and their political leaders. They filled the stadium, Adama Super Stadium, on the 7th of September. And what was it they came to do? To tell the whole world that they now reject this constitution that enslaved them and impoverished them as basis of the union. Since their signature had been uh, forged and put on top of a document they didn't, uh, you know, discuss with anybody. And so, with the three rejecting that constitution by solemn assemblies, you know, and that's at the highest level of decision making. The next thing was, uh, how do we how do we put a timeline for when these things must stop, when these enslavement must cease? And so, on the 18th of December, on the on the 11th of December in 2018, we again gathered in Lagos uh, in what we call the Freedom Park Proclamation to declare that we will not submit ourselves to further business under that constitution. Just like the apartheid constitution was being rejected from the 1910 when it was imposed, it took 80 years. For those who are asking what LNC have been doing for, for 20 years and 21 years, if you look at all of these things I've listed, if you did not do any one of them, you could not go to the next one. If we did not call the meeting of the whole country, which became Ponaco, how will we have come to the consensus that enabled us go to file the suit in 2007 to say that constitution must not go down because we had a, a, a draft of what we what all of us will subscribe to. In fact, it was a delegate from Casina that moved the motion for the adoption of the final draft of the Pronaco Conference. It was a, de a delegate from Casina. So from that point, if we didn't go to challenge that constitution in that manner, how would we have gotten to 2011 uh, 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 legal declaration by which we said, we have come to the end of our endurance. Let each of the blocks go and work out their constitutions for what will happen. It took a number of years from that uh, 2011 to the first uh, solemn assembly and all of the ones that followed all the way to 2018. And then having done all of that, the three came together to say, let us now enforce this uh, decision. These processes have come to the point where we can't continue because the situation wasn't improving. The ones who were, uh, uh, you know, insisting on feudalism and all kinds of uh, master and servant arrangement began to bring the Fulani from all over the place to come in and kill people in the in the in the in the ethnic cleansing that we have seen. I'm sure uh, the the listeners, uh, the viewers, uh, must have seen uh, where Gaffney was from. Gaffney was talking about, uh, you know, all of the kind of things they are doing, and so it wasn't by accident that uh, Boko Haram came. It was all a part of a scheme. It wasn't by accident that Boko Haram exchanged, you know, allegiances with ISIS in 2014. It wasn't by accident that they charged Jonathan out of the place. It wasn't by accident that Buhari, who was appointed by Boko Haram as a spokesman at the time Jonathan wanted a meeting that would have happened in Saudi Arabia. It wasn't by accident that Buhari was the one saying that an attack on Boko Haram was an attack on the North. It wasn't by accident that immediately Buhari got sworn in. That same Boko Haram that had joined with ISIS, becoming Iswap, now went on, uh, you know, a wild rampage, which uh, they called Fulani Hesmen, as if it's Hesmen. No, it was ethnic cleansing that was commenced with vigor. And so when you saw the governors of the states that were being attacked, going to complain to the president who was commander, who is commander in chief, and who, who in a federal government, in, in, in an arrangement in which all the guns are in the hands of the federal government, the states are not to touch any guns. And people from aliens, from everywhere, are pouring in, in numbers and killing people and taking their lives. And these governors went to tell the president, and the president said, oh no, go home and learn how to live in peace with Fulani of Benue. That was the answer Buhari gave. The, the, the defense minister of the time, says, oh yes, you see, there were cow grazing routes, all of you who have gone to do uh, build uh, development on the grazing routes should remove those developments so that cows can move 
freely, defense minister. Then the police IG turns around to say, oh, you see, all of you passing anti-open grazing laws are the ones uh, causing the problem. You better go and repeal those laws, otherwise you contend with the headsmen by yourself. Then you saw the, the one in Kaduna, uh, Rufai, the governor there, who said he went to 14 different countries. That was his own answer to the killings that were going on at the time. You know, he said he went uh, to 14 different countries to give uh, those people who are coming to kill money so that they can they will, they will they will stop coming to kill and when you take it further to where the buhari that has remained the uh, grand patron of meyeti allah let's take note of this point buhari had been grand patron of meyeti allah for many years even before he became president he is still their grand patron he hasn't told us he has resigned or pulled away from them and we saw situations where federal government of Nigeria was having, you know, having meetings with Miyeti Allah and going to the point of pulling 100 billion naira from the treasury to give to Miyeti Allah to say, you know, uh, just to help them resettle their accounts in some way. And the more those monies were being given to Miyeti Allah and their associates in those 14 different countries, the more we saw sophisticated weapons, you know, coming up and nobody... The, 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 that same federal government that had exclusive charge over security, over police, over army, over DSS, we don't. They don't have any one person they've arrested among those who are who are coming in to kill this number of people across the length and breadth of southern middle belt of Nigeria. And uh, what do we see? Once in a while, even the ones that are captured are released, and then uh, they say they've repented, and then they put them in the army. So. It came to the point where the, the, the president, uh, Buhari, announced that uh, anybody could come from through our borders open, compromising our sovereignty. And we saw the number of Fulanis that came. In that period, we recall that the governor of uh, Bauchi had uh, announced uh, that Fulani from any, everywhere in Africa belong to Nigeria. So when you put all of this together, you come to only one conclusion, that it is actually the federal government of Nigeria as being controlled by the Fulani that is, you know, uh, presiding, that orchestrating this ethnic cleansing uh, business. And that was why at the time, uh, the alliance, the eminent alliance, having connected with the people, at the time the peoples of Nigeria gathered in the Freedom Park Proclamation of uh, December 11 in 2018, it was in that presentation that we raised our voices uh, very high, high enough for the U.S. and other countries of the world to hear us that we had come to where it was now a matter of extraordinary, extraordinary emergency to wind up the union that laid us open to this kind of, uh, you know, uh, extermination, uh, you know, potential. Every, every day was, uh, you know, manifesting more and more, and there was more impunity in how it was being, uh, you know, executed. So it was from that alarm we raised on December 11 in 2018 that we got to Washington in January by the 17th of January in 2019 uh, for the emergency press conferences on Nigeria to raise the alarm about the killing because uh, the pattern was uh, very easy to see that uh, the ones who are being killed were mostly uh, Christians and the ones who are killing them were these uh, jihadists, Muslims who, when you when you go to what those 12 states that passed Sharia, what they said they wanted, they said they didn't want democracy, they didn't want constitutionalism. And then Boko Haram come, came in saying the same thing and doing exactly what uh, the states have been doing in, uh, you know, chopping. You saw, do you remember the governor in uh, Zafra that was chopping up people's hands in the execution of the Sharia they had imposed? How am I to make a distinction between what Shani Yerima was doing in the name of Sharia? He chopped people's uh, hands off. Then uh, uh, Shekau came, blowing them with bombs. We saw Sani Yerima go to Egypt to buy a 13-year-old girl and says his Sharia permitted it, his Islam permitted it. How am I to make a distinction between that and what Shekau did in abducting Chibok girls, whom we saw him put on sale on CNN? You saw when they were auctioning the girls. Yeah. So this, the, the, whatever these 12 states set out to do in Sharia is exactly what uh, Boko Haram set out to do, is exactly what they brought ISIS to help them do. And these were the things we went to explain to the U.S. And the... Uh, we, since ISIS was in the mix, the U.S. was at war with ISIS. 
And we told the U.S. that, look, the people you are fighting with in the Middle East have since uh, relocated to Abakia. This is what they are doing. This is what you can do. And that discussion went all the way to where, you know, a finding. We, we went to Congress. We went to, uh, you know, the, 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 all the agencies of uh, the United States government who had to decide on uh, what should be done concerning the matter. Luckily for us, there was uh, a law that had been made since uh, 1988. They call uh, the International Religious Freedom Act. This is the first time that law has been activated for use because uh, by that law, the U.S. committed itself to go into any part of the world where these kind of killings were being, uh, were, were being uh, uh, perpetrated. That is, people kill, being killed on account of their faith. Now, we were able to establish our case for fitting that we, we, we established that our case fitted into the internment of that law. That was what happened between January and end of July. Every department of the U.S. government that had to interrogate it, interrogate it did interrogate it. And they came to that conclusion that, yes, this is the kind of thing that uh, this law was intended uh, for. And uh, from, from putting Nigeria on the watch list in December of 2019, uh, they came to where Niger that was escalated to Nigeria being a, a country of particular concern because we saw during the lockdown that everybody else, you know, uh, was stopped from moving and full and from everywhere, you know, poured in in such large numbers into the south. It was in that period that they, 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 they moved it up to that CPC. That CPC meaning that the U.S. had given sufficient notice for Nigeria to abate the killings that were going on. You had when Trump said so, uh, in the meeting where they took uh, the body to him to uh, talk about other things, and he said, look, this must end. They didn't listen in that oral warning. He came to special, you know, country of special uh, concern, and then he came to country of a uh, particular concern, and then he came to executive order. When we go, yeah, I'm sure from what you've read, that executive order and the timelines contained in it and the intentions you know, in black and white, what is it that the U.S. is looking out for? He listed four different uh, categories of countries that are targeted. Countries that are, that are on the special watch list, countries that have uh, gone into the CPC status, countries that are hosting, uh, you know, entities that are, you know, uh, 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 either of special or particular concern to the U.S. And Nigeria has three, Boko Haram, uh, uh, Israel, Fulani Hesmen. And then countries in which the government uh, seem either unable or unwilling to, uh, you know, address the killing. Nigeria is not only guilty on that fourth, on that uh, fourth ground. They are, they are, they, they've, they've shown them in every action that they are unwilling. They have shown in every way that they are in, uh, in, uh, incapable. More than that, they have also shown themselves to be in collusion. Because, it, 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 I mean, tell me how else we are to explain how the ones that moved during the lockdown moved. It is, it is whoever that is in control of the security services that had allowed them to move the way they moved. There's no other interpretation to it. So they are in collusion with them. And that's, that, uh, that uh, executive order says the U.S. should be in a position from implementation of that executive order, should be in a position to anticipate when these killings will happen, be in a position to stop it from happening, and if it already started, be in a position to halt it from, it, from continuing but more importantly, to hold account accountable, to hold to account whoever had a hand in it. And that because of those uh, four grounds of, uh, of guilt already listed, the government of Nigeria is already indicted for being participants in the, in the killings, for being facilitators of the killing, to, for being in collusion with the killers. And so when they say they're going to hold accountable, those who are, it's not only the henchmen or whoever is hiding in the forest, it includes the government that have been providing facilitation or looking the other way. So well, that's how we got to where we are. And then the part we have to do, which is part of why I decided to come to, you know, uh, uh, this uh, brief session today, the part we have to do by ourselves has to do with uh, that constitution itself. The constitutional force majeure we're talking about is uh, to... Like, like we've explained before, the constitution is a, is, a, is a social contract. Like every other contract, if something goes wrong fundamentally, 
that will make it impossible for either or all of the parties to perform their obligations under the contract, they can declare a force majeure. And it's just a matter of emergency to say, look, on account of X, Y, Z that have changed the circumstances, uh, extraordinary circumstances have arisen. What are those extraordinary circumstances that have arisen around uh, our own uh, social contract? Sharia has been introduced formally by 12 contiguous states. They are contiguous and they acted simultaneously in year 2000. That is one ground. They've moved away from the secular union. We thought we were building together. They seceded. Second, the constitutions by which we became one union made us a federation, federal arrangement. They moved away from that federal arrangement. They imposed unitarism. We've waited since 1967. 53 years, is it not enough waiting? Yet they say to us, you can't do anything about it. Nigeria has seen the Zolobo, Nigeria has seen the, the, the what, what else do they call it? And, uh, you know, we, 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 we said it has come to where those fundamental, those departures from the fundamental basis of uh, the union, you know, are, are, are enough justification for us. Uh, how much more now that on account of that imposition, they have now in, in, in place, in, empowered themselves to come to kill us, take our lands, and bring the full from everywhere to become the owners of the land. And so, we, quite apart from all the other matters of quota system and the lack of electricity and exclusive lease and that sea states that make you minority when you are majority and seven and seven local government areas, all those are there and tormenting the lives of our people, derailing the destinies of millions and millions of people. And so, we said, it has come to where we must now declare that emergency. We must uh, take steps to show that uh, the, the, the marriage, that contract has come to an end. We're going to suspend obligations on that, that contract. That is what it's all about. And uh, that's the part we need to do so that the third parties who may uh, be able to get here will uh, you know, uh, get here sooner than later. And uh, we'll, more information will be going to those who need to be informed in the coming days. But if anybody, if anybody is in any part of Nigeria, and still discussing how they're going to go to elections under that constitution of 99. We, we, we have been trying to tell them all the while that the elections will not solve this problem. But somehow they believe that in their, in their error, they think that our sovereignty is now with them, especially because some illiterate uh, senior advocates, illiterate professors of law have been telling them so. But we have done enough in telling them that it is not so that our sovereignty, the sovereignty belongs to the people, and it's only on account of that sovereignty that they can make constitution. So all of those who gather to swear to defend and uphold that constitution are actually committing treason against the rest of us. And if at the time we had taken all these steps, all these democratic steps from 2005 to 2007 to 2011, all of what I've counted now that the peoples of Nigeria had done to solve this problem, and you still have renegades from, from, from this, especially from the Alliance uh, territory. We're not bothered with uh, those who are the descendants of Uthman Danfodio or the political descendants of uh, Amadou Bello. We're not bothered with the fact that they want to retain what they inherited. Our concern now is that political actors from these three blocks who are prepared to swear to defend and uphold that constitution of 99, they are going to have issues with us. We are going to have to tackle them like the ones enabling the killings going on in the Middle Belt and elsewhere. We are going to tackle them as the ones enabling the impoverishment of the rest of the people. We are, the ones, we are going to tackle them as the ones enabling all of what we have complained about for which these agitations are going on. And so let this be another round of notice to them that we have come to where we do not want to go to any further elections under that constitution. Because the winner will have to swear to defend and uphold the constitution that impoverish and kill other people. And so, those politicians from southern Nigeria, from Middle Belt, who are clinging onto that constitution against the will of their people, who have repudiated the constitution, they are telling us that they are more, they are, they are, that, that they will rather hang on with the enemy and get benefit because as governor, you see how much they take every month. As senators, you see how much they take every month. In all the, the, all the political parties in Nigeria subscribe to that constitution. To be doing elections under that constitution, they subscribe to that constitution. And so, 
they have put themselves in a situation, they, are, they, they put themselves on a head-on collision with their own people. In the coming days, it might come to where they will have to account to their own people for their roles in this criminality, in this murder that is going because everything being done by the government of the day, whether they are Fulani uh, presiding or anybody else, everything being done in the name of this constitution is being enabled by those who swear to defend it and uphold it. And we are, we are telling them that we have come to the point where they must now come back to the side of their own people in rejecting that constitution. If they are not willing to do so by themselves, they are going to be compelled by their people. Because when they go to win to be senator, they, they pretend they are going to represent the people. When they win, they win to be governor, they pretend the people have voted them. The election that INEC is conducting is not one being conducted by people who are to be governed. The instrument by which the winner will govern is not, is, not, is not coming from the people whose signature have been put as the authors of their own damnation. Let it be made, let it be clear to all who are listening, to all who may want to ask how is it this way and not that way. That constitution has been repudiated. It wasn't our making, it has been repudiated. The, what they're doing now is like somebody, a black in South Africa, at the time Mandela and Co. were fighting to take down apartheid constitution. If you found any group of black men who wanted to go to get benefits that will sustain that constitution, that is what all the politicians from the South and Middle Belt who are participating in, who are planning, let us leave what has happened already as yesterday. The next election is 2023. All of those who are planning to go and contest election in this, from the South and the Middle Belt of Nigeria under that constitution will be treated as the traitors they are because blood is flowing all over the place on account of that constitution. If they do not care about the blood of those who have been killed now, those who are under this pressure, as have been identified by the UN Special Rapporteur, that our constitutional arrangement is like pressure cooker for injustice, those who are suffering from that injustice, those who have been killed, those who have been persecuted, those who have been, whose lives have been rendered uh, useless, are going to take it out against them for being enablers of that uh, bad uh, constitutional arrangement. I think that's where uh, I would want to uh, drop it for the moment. Thank you, Maz. Thank you so much for that insight. Hopefully our people will begin to understand where we're going. That's if you still have sense remaining because we have come to the conclusion that most of our people are brain dead and when they're following criminals parading as uh, freedom fighters. So not only are we going to take time to scale all this event that has happened to us now, we have to use a hell of a lot of resources to, to fix the damage caused by so-called freedom fighters. Uh, or, or so-called criminals parading as freedom fighters that uh, we, we must continue because the future of our children are endangered we have to get this right so we have no time you know to to waste so sister Kui, please go ahead and then soon we'll be taking uh, go ahead sister Kui. um thank you very much uh mr tony thank you sisters uh what what you want our people to understand is that for every human challenge there is an appropriate response. It's like a woman wants to get pregnant. There are things that you need to do to be pregnant. If you get a bowl of apple and you're eating a bowl of apple, there's no way you continue to eat apple and one day you get pregnant and baby's inside your womb. It does not happen under this earth. So we have a challenge. We have a problem. There are specified protocols, internationally acceptable specified protocols that you must follow. I'm saying this for those that are running up and down, like my sister said, running all sorts of franchise, assuming that they are brain dead, expecting the rest of us to be brain dead. We will not be brain dead. We went to school. Did you hear what I said? I said, we went to school. We were learned. We are educated. And when you are educated, there are things that you should be doing. The essence of education is for your brain to function. It's not just to collect certificates. That exercise of going to school prepares your brain so that when you meet challenges and problems, you will be able to think critically, break the problem down, and begin to solve them one after the other. You see, it's easier to react than to think. Anybody can react, except the dead. 
if you are alive, somebody does something to you, you can react. But it's only people that think that can come up with right decision and cause of action. So we are calling on thinkers. We are not calling on reactors. We have reacted enough. For 50 years, our people have been reacting. All sorts of reactions. Some on the main road, some are standing, sitting down on the radio, reacting. We are calling on thinkers. Begin to think. From what our brother narrated and from all the suspense shows we've been having, you will see that we, a lot has been achieved at the international scene and even at the local scene through LNC. They follow protocol. They follow and they are step by step phases. It is time to join the local initiative because there's something that you can do as a Christian living in Nigeria or any lover of freedom and justice. You can see people dying. People are being killed. Those are not goats. Those are not log of wood. It's no more time for party. It's time to people for people to think. So we need to bring this project to an expected end. The next cause of action is constitutional cost major, like you heard him say. And we need to be part of it. And you being part of it is educating yourself, your mind. Even just our videos. If you can go to the, our videos, you will learn a lot. And your mind will begin to function properly. That death, you know, that some people killed, some things have happened. People's mind and brain died, like Sister Mona said. But you can revive your brain. You can make your big brain to begin to function again by the type of things you put inside. But if you keep listening to those that are just ready to make money and make franchise out of your pain and sorrow, going in circles forever, your brain will never wake up. It will continue to be dead. You need to get educated. Go to our videos, starting from number 29. There are other things that we've done before, but I think from 29, 30, if I'm right, sisters, mm -hmm. you start watching, you start listening, you start learning. Then your brain will begin to receive information and knowledge so that you can give appropriate response to the problem we have. Thank you very much, sisters. Thank you, Mr. Tony. Thank you. So we are going to take a few uh, contributions from our viewers. So uh, I will pin the um, Zoom meeting ID as well as the password. So if you are ready to call in and give us your contribution, we want to see you just like you're seeing us because we know there are groups out there. There will be black answering uh, Henry Wu. You know, there will be a white answering uh, Monaji. They will never use their correct name to to do anything. They are free in freedom fighting, but they will never use their correct name on the uh, on the internet. So we are because we don't have anything to hide. You know, we are here for anyone to investigate. So when you use a Superman to represent yourself, use all kinds of icons to represent them. You know, you are hiding something. So our name is our name. My name is Muna Jimso Aga Okbala, and I have nothing to hide. So if you want to join us. Please call in, um, not call in, because we don't want to listen to Miss Grants. We have important issues to discuss. Log into the Zoom meeting, and uh, we'll admit you. There's a password. We need to admit you because we know there are a lot of crooks out there going to disrupt a uh, uh, Zoom uh, live meeting. So if you have the balls to come in and make your contribution, this is the time to do so. I'm wondering, do we? Let me make sure the uh, information is still pinned. Uh, actually, it's on our uh, it's on our topic today, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and pin it again. Don't know what happened to the other one. So, and let me try to call it out too for those that may not be able to find that uh, pinned information. Okay, so the number, the meeting ID number is. Nine eight seven three four six zero nine zero six nine two nine eight seven three four six zero six nine two and the password is zero zero three two eight two password is zero zero three two eight two like we said if you have something to contribute this is the time to come in uh, we have somebody waiting but they disappeared before I can uh, accept them into the waiting area 
uh, if not okay we have one guy here uh, and if you're coming in please use your real name we are not going to accept any um, any uh, zoom uh, meeting without your name on it. Uh, and if you're coming in please use your real name we are not going to accept um, any so uh, excuse me so when any, you come in uh, um, yeah when you come in put mute your phone because i know i use them all the time when you come in the first thing is going to ask you is to uh accept the video and then use your audio please immediately mute your audio at that point so um mazi go ahead you're on mood we have uh hawaii mati nine waiting so give us a few minutes sir and we'll bring you in so mazi please make it snappy snappy talking about me yes all right i'll make you snappy um my name is Clifford Ryan. I believe everybody can see my name right there. Um, I thank you ladies very much uh, for your efforts. Um, Sister Muna, Sister Ekwi, and Sister Augusta. Especially Sister Augusta and Sister Ekwi have been very, very busy this morning uh, reading off all the dingbats and the miscreants on the line. I appreciate that because today we have an important uh, person and uh, we don't have room for people to distract us and be posting nonsense. So we have to have zero tolerance for all the miscreants out there because we are operating at a higher pedestal. We are not, we are intellectuals for goodness sake. And we, we are very rare to find, um, you can't find people like us in other groups. So we are very proud to talk about that. Well, going back to um, <clears throat> the topic now, I want to make this thing very clear. There is no way anybody, any group, anywhere in this world will start any self-determination pursuit without defining the area for which you are pursuing for self-determination. That is, how do they put it? First order of business. It is first order of business. If you look, I'm from Oguta uh, area, where Mutala Muhammad called Imo State. I'm from Oguta area. So even if you want to talk about Imo State, when you say Imo State, the next thing will be people, somebody would like to look up where is Imo State? Uh, what is the footprint? So in anything at all, Anything at all, even in our various offices, where you work, when you say I am in social so place, they will look it up. And where are they going to look it up? They're not going to look it up in the sky. They will look it up in a map. You know why I'm saying this? I'm going to be brief, please, ladies. Because people, especially the dingbats and, and the miscreants, they are first map, 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 map. You cannot do without a map. It's absolutely impossible. So we must have to have a map. Where is the map of the uh, area you are contesting? Right. I am sure, ladies, uh, Augusta and, 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 and Mona, uh, two of you may have one, one form or the one time or the other uh, put on two piece wrapper here in Houston. And probably the same thing with our sister, uh, sister in, 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 in Kentucky. So anybody who sees you there with two piece wrapper, that means Houston is not part of Biafra. Or Kentucky is part of Biafra. I'm following the I'm following the argument where they say that the only way to provide a map, to show a map, is where you see two uh, where you see a lady tying two piece wrapper. He didn't even say in Nigeria, he said anywhere. <laughs> and so you see what the importance. You see the you know in computer, you call it wildcard. You see the wild card they are throwing. You see, you, you, you see the importance of having a map. You cannot do without it. Thank if this is the only comment I'm going to make here, that would be fine. I can I can log off, but I want to re-emphasize this. If you don't have a settled map, you are wasting your time. I don't even want to go because it is the settled map now that defines internal cohesion because that's that's the next thing. Right. If your map is does it show a monolithic area that is it just one tribe or do you have different tribes? You know, like the Yoruba, the, the, I mean, the Yoruba is one tribe. 
but the other areas you have uh, uh, heterogeneous uh, uh, footprint. So the, the, you know the way they say it is, is that that a two we should two we should that is that is the beginning point the beginning of the beginning. So if, if they have lost it, they have lost it. If this is the only point I can make here. Fine, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you so far. Thank you, Mazi. Thank you, Mazi, for that contribution. Please let's. Uh, um we would like our questions today to um, surround the executive order for people that are confused about what it's all about. Some people are out there taking credit when they say they are not Christians, when they say that Christianity is fake, when they say all these things, but now they are taking credit. So let's focus our topic today on what we discuss. Engage us in a conversation regarding that. So I'm going to admit uh, Hayawi Matt. Uh, we prefer you really use your name because uh, like my name, my finger is right here on a remove button. If you are not using your name and you are not adhering to our uh, policies and procedures, you will be removed immediately. So, uh, H.A., I'm not even trying to say this name, I will mess up his name. So, uh, hopefully, start off with your name and where you're coming from. Okay. My name is... Uh, we need a video. Need a video, sir. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm... Can you see me now? Yes, there you are. Yes, we can. Okay. So my name is uh, Father Reverend Father Chukwe Mecca Mwekede, and I'm calling from um, Pennsylvania, Enola. Mm -hmm. So I'm just calling in to uh, thank all of you, uh, especially Tony Nadi. So I'm sorry. Let me put up this. To encourage him in all he's doing and uh, to overlook all the garbage and the attacks that are coming from our people. Um, it takes a man to focus without allowing people to pull him down. So um, then I also want to say something about religion. Um, it's quite a pity that people are taking undue advantage of our people because of the situation, I'm a priest, and I've worked in Nigeria before I came to the United States. I've been a pastor, so I know how much people depend on us. And unfortunately, some of us take that advantage to manipulate people. So giving a power back to our people is not only politically, not only on the issue of Biafra, but also on issue of religion, because the way we go about it, I think we are causing even more harm than good. So um, then also some go to the extreme because of the aberration and the, the um, problem some religious leaders are causing in our land some can now come up to even to denounce religion, to talk evil about Christianity. You go to Facebook, you see our young people who, who say all sorts of things against Jesus Christ, against God himself. So I don't really know. So we also hope that with this forum, we can also be sensitizing our people. We cannot do without God. And people going out there to tell them that uh, Christianity is evil or Christianity is the cause of our problem, I've always argued that Christ, uh, Christianity did not come from America. And America, as much as I know, they practice Christianity and the, the life here is good. Things are working. So it is all about what you make out of religion. So I don't want to take all your time, but I just want to thank all of you, and I pray we continue to work and hope that one day we shall reach our destination. And I have also used this opportunity. I saw somebody asking how he can help. So I believe whatever you are, you are doing, you need money. So if you don't know what to do, just go to the website, LNC website, and make donation. We need money. So uh, you can also tell other people about it. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Of course, there is no way this amount of work will not entail money. It costs money to bring our brothers and sisters from the uh, uh, Southern Cardinal to come and participate in here in the White House. It was somebody that paid for their visa. It was somebody that flew them here. It was somebody that put them in a hotel. It was somebody that uh, planned all the logistics that made it possible. But our people will like to cheat each other. You know, we sit there in the background and we are clapping hands and thanking, but we are not asking how can we help. So thank you, uh, Reverend, for bringing that up. May Chupo Kikabiyama continue to bless you. And then we have the next person, Mr. Okoye. Please make sure that your listening device is turned off um, so that it's not vibrating back as you talk. And then the other ones, make sure you have your names ready to go. I'm not a very person. Our people will like to cheat each other in. Mas, your video is not on Mr. Okoye. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm turning it on now. Okay. I was watching your um, your your roundup with the other guy, the pastor or the reverend. And my question actually is to turn it Nadi, although he's gone now. Right. But um, I was I was I was I was to ask him what is his confidence level with um, us achieving this force measure? Whether um, because with everything in Nigeria, there's you have to be skeptical about anything there in that country. Have we played all the scenarios in regards to if the first measure didn't happen on the date they said for it to happen? What is the plan B? What what is what happens then? What happens? Okay, can I and can I respond to you? Yeah, please. Like we said, um, this thing didn't come up right now. It's been for twenty years and it's been in phases. Now, since it started, there were things that, you know, our people would do. Like you said, don't go for election. They will go for election. It did not stop the project. There's something our people need to know that if you want to solve a problem, when you put, if you succeed in breaking it down and then put the steps, it's easier for you to handle things because when those steps are laid down on the table, you, in that state, you have caveats. If this does not happen, this will happen. If this does not happen, this will happen. So it's already interwoven in the project. It's not today's project. Things have been happening before now. Like I said, 2015, they were not supposed to go for that election, but they did. But the project did not stop because people will come and do something. But so far, you know where you're going and your steering is in your hand and you're going. Now, before the issue of caution post majeure, you needed a tool at the international scene, at the UN. Nobody, like in the open, understands how UN in 2007 had to bring out that um, tool, the indigenous people's rights. It's part of this project. It was done on the ground. The people were walking up and down. They didn't know what was happening. It took 45 years to bring out that tool. There's a program that we had here. At a time, the man that tried to do it before Kofi Annan, was executed. He was killed. Many people have tried to bring out that apparatus because before then, other indigenous peoples have been getting freedom with the same tool, but it wasn't official for everyone. So it depends on how you bring yourself together because we are not the only indigenous people in the world. We are not the only ones being marginalized in the world. So they've been using issues coming to do it and everything. But the people wanted UN to have that document so that Anybody or any group that wants to free themselves, they will follow this protocol. So Excuse me. Like I understand, understand uh, all these things that you're trying to say. Hold on, hold, hold, on, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. So, as I was saying, if we are following at the international scene what has been set, so it's beyond just us. It's not what do we do if consumer force major fails. Like I said, there are options. And there are things that will make it not to fail because we are talking about the people. You're talking. You're talking. You're talking, about, you're talking about unreasonable people. No. Nigerian politicians are very unreasonable. You're no, talking about Nigerian politicians. Bad politicians. Bad man. Bad man. All Nigeria's politicians. See, this project has been going on oh. even when there are unreasonable people there because we are following protocol. Like when you're solving a formula in mathematics, two plus two is four. So what, what is your confidence level? 
Sister Equi, if I may add, the UN Secretary General that was killed, that tried to push this forward over 45 years ago, you can go and Google it. His name was uh, Dag Amashkord. He was the one that tried to push this, they are no longer the minority, and try and understand that the um, congressmen are not part of this deal. They are our workers. And you know, the problem with Nigerians is that you don't even know that these people you send to go and represent you actually work for you. You don't understand. If you understand that they work for you, then you would appreciate the fact that you are the people that need to do this. So we are the people that need to do this constitution. We are the people that have the confidence level, not the uh, people that were sent there to supposedly represent us and they are practically representing their pockets. So you have to understand this. So it has nothing to do with the NAS, the National Assembly. We have said this like a gazillion times. You keep bringing pen and paper and I don't know what you're writing, why you're not writing the facts. So you have to listen to what we are saying. And uh, Sister uh, Muna, if I may digress a little bit, I hope that with this, we treated the executive order from Donald Trump. Now you know where it came from. Because I know that you have an interview with the World Franchise, and he was claiming that he is the one that did it. Now you know where it came from. Go back to our own videos. The documentations are there. If you want to read it, they are on our page. You can go and read it and know where the executive order, the people that masterminded it, the people that worked towards it. We have named uh, uh, Frank Gaffney. Those are the people that helped to have this executive order in place. So stop listening and start, start refocusing your attention to the truth because that's about the only thing that would set us free. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you. Our people need to understand the power of the people. Power of the people. Not the power of your government. You, the people, are in charge of all of this. The people that are in charge of, uh, that, are, that are leading us, or claim they only want 0.00% of the population. So why is it when it comes to doing things, we start relegating that information or that uh, action to them? When you have the power, we, the people, have the power to get this done. So we have Infinity Note 6. Um... We are assuming that they're using their notepad. So as soon as you come on, please mute your audio, mute your listening device so that you're not vibrating back. And then we will have you um, um, uh, make your contribution or ask your question. Please make it snappy. We have three other people waiting so that we can call it a day. Uh, Infinity looks like you're having connecting issues. It's still connecting. Maybe I will let somebody else in that may have a faster internet to connect. So Galaxy A80, um, is also, is that one even connecting? Okay. Not sure. Okay. So make sure your audio is on mute. When you come on Galaxy, you are not doing anything. You're not connecting. Your video is not off. So I may have to take you out. I'll put you back in the waiting room. Sister Muna, can you probably connect all of them at the same time? See who comes in no. first. No, okay. because they, they, they tend to be rowdy, especially when you have mischievous people uh, as part of your listeners. So so you can have a better control. We have people listening. We don't want chaos. Okay, so Pastor KK, you're connecting to your audio. So whoever that comes in first uh, will talk. Yeah, so if your internet is not strong, it's going to be a while before you can connect. So please mute your audio or you will be removed. Mute your audio. We want some type of professionality here. Don't be listening while you're talking. You can listen to yourself later on if you want to. Okay, so they are both connecting. While we are waiting, I will try the Akatel 3V. Akatel 3V, hopefully... You will connect as well. I wish they could write their real names. So it so depends on their device if they set it up that way. So that's why I'm forgiving them. If okay. you have like an iPad, you may say iPad 7. You know? Okay. So, okay, Akatel is on. Akatel, go ahead. Akatel, unmute yourself.
Might as well mute yourself. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Your name uh, and where you're calling from. Good morning. Uh, yes, my name is uh, Pastor Okeke Zebulon. Okay. I'm in Boston. Yes, sir. Okay. So, my sister, I really love uh, what you're doing. And uh, I really appreciate the way uh, energy is going right now. Because at the beginning, it was not in this way he was going. But now he's going to the right way. Tony is doing the right way. But I want him to understand that what you want, we need Biafra. That is all. We, we, because the constitution of Nigeria cannot allow them what uh, and the outside flag profiting from Nigeria will not allow them to do it in that way we're talking about. But now for us to be free and get our own freedom, let us obtain Biafra. That's the only thing. Tony, if you can be able to do everything, that Biafra will come. In fact, you will be an, a hero. I will be very, very happy with you. We all, we are here, we are suffering, and we are seeing how our people are stopped, slaughtered. Our, our uh, uh, daughters are slaughtered, and the parts of their body is found in bushes. So this is not acceptable. So, Tony, if you can do anything you can do for us to get Biafra, you will be a hero. Come together with other people and make it to happen. In fact, God will bless you. Thank you so much. Bless you, sir. Thank you. Uh, yes. Can I make a little comment? Yeah. What yes. you said? Go ahead. Um, so uh, we need uh, there's something we are trying to teach our people. You know, Tony Nadi has not changed. We say the way he's doing it now. Yeah, no, no, no. It has always been the same. You know, it's like when you have a mathematics that you're solving and it has a formula. Those are some of us that did that. This thing they call proof. You remember, in secondary school, you start from the first one. If you miss the mark, you get it. You get it wrong. It's from that step you start following methodology. That's how we learned methodology in solving problems in problems of the life too. So Tony Nadi did not change. It is the same way he presented it to our people twenty years. There was this video of him that I was watching twenty thirteen. It was still the same thing. I'm like, it's so consistent. It's the level of our people to understand, the ability of our people to understand what he has been saying for the past 20 years. People come and narrow our problem. You say our problem is Biafra. It's beyond just Biafra. You are making it a kitchen problem. This is a global problem. It's a world problem. And by the grace of God, this is the way it has been presented to the international people that understand that this is a global problem. And that's why they're coming to help us. That's why they're coming to work with us. That's why you're having your robots coming to work with us. That's why you're having middle belters working. But if you narrow it down, the people that are killing in Southern Kaduna, cutting their hands and chopping their hands, are they Biafrans? He said, if you can get us Biafra. We want our people to stop being myopic, please. Emotional. Can you broaden your mind? Sentimental. Be stop, stop being sentimental. Open your mind. To see the size of the problem. What is happening to you in Biafra? It's the same disease in southern Kaduna. It's the same disease even in the northeast. Where Boko Haram is clear. It's the same disease. That's what we've been trying to tell our people. If you make the diagnosis right. If you get the diagnosis right. That's the only time the treatment will be right. But if you make mistake at the point of diagnosis, you are going to prescribe, your treatment will be wrong and the patient will oh, die. Mm -hmm. It is so important to understand the diagnosis. And that's what we're saying. Please, my people. My people, my fathers, we fought Biafra. We bled for Biafra. So you're not more Biafra than we are. But the fact is the fact. You can't change it because you're sentimental about Biafra. Stop putting your mind this way. Open it to see who else is going through what you're going through. And then form alliance with those people. And I will say again, there is a formula for a particular mathematics. You cannot team up with somebody that is pouring water into your gunpowder. It's not about come and team up. This is not football we are trying to play. It's self-determination. It's independence. And there are rules. We read it here, UN Declaration for Indigenous People's Rights. They say you have to work with other indigenous peoples in your locality. There are rules. 
There are protocols. You can't change the rule because you're your friend. Learn to follow the rules and you'll make life easier for yourself. Stop being sentimental. We don't want to be reactors. We want to be thinkers. Thank you very much. Thank you. And it's so sad coming from an elder, elder uh, uh, state man of our place. You know, we're trying to teach our children to be grounded. We're trying to teach our children to follow this, the structure, to follow the methodology. And then you have big men falling apart and being emotional about everything as if that's going to help us. My brother, Infinity No Six, please go ahead. Your name and where you're calling from. Thank you for being so patient. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Actually, let me see if I can unmute you. Okay, go ahead. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. My name is Chimezi. I'm calling from Mabia State. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? Go ahead. Yes. Um, I just came across this, uh, this on Facebook and uh, I... That was at the point of uh, the rendition of uh, Tony Nadi when he was uh, presenting his own part. So I became so interested. The topic was uh, is catchy to me because that's this is the general. If you come around here, most uh, people here, all of us are frustrated, and these are the kind of things we want to hear because things are not going fine. People are not feeling good. So this thing, the procession is too high. To the extent, and what I want to uh, uh, contribute on my own side is that uh, if you look from all you have, everything you guys have, have said so far, no one is too small to remove or to overlook. Everything is complete, absolutely so reasonable. And my joy is that women are in the business now because men sometimes, I don't think, I don't think most times men, men things look like a party to me. But when women join, in this fight now, as I'm, I'm very happy. We so are much mothers. Happy. We are Everybody. mothers. We bleed yes. for our children Mother. every Mother. day. We bleed <laughs> for the evil going on in our land. I believe that. Look at how smart you are, and this is where you're stuck. It kills me every day. And some people think this is about franchise and making money. They think this is about names. They think this is about a riding up there where my son will finish school and he cannot find a decent job. My dear people are perishing here. A lot of a lot of a lot of brain are wasted. A lot of people are wasting. They are frustrated. And the problem is even from home. This 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 thing, this thing, it has it has destroyed so many things. Even our parents suffered it. This, this thing, uh, why most people are misbehaving is not even their, their choice or their best choice, but frustration. Frustration. Like, I heard so many things where uh, you people say, a lot of things like um, um, when they were saying about people taking or considering the politicians as the, 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 the people holding the power, instead of the people knowing or thinking or knowing that they, that they, actually, they are the people serve with their power, but they are afraid. They have been afraid of the politicians to say the truth. They are afraid to confront everything. They are just afraid. They are just at the mercy of whatever happened. So I'm happy if there is a way, if there will be a way to get this uh, message, get to many people, you know, and uh, even playing on the street, getting into people's minds so that at least we can revive because I feel so happy. I feel so, so happy. So so motivated listening to or hearing this kind of thing i swear a lot of things you guys see i i don't think there is anything less i i can't i can't come and repeat all of them thank but you but if this thing can if this thing can be played around on the streets if you can get to many people much people and again there's something uh, you guys said inclusion nobody is an enemy even those people that are playing uh, uh, the wrong uh, lane i think most of them are playing those lane because they are they are running on ignorance. Most of them don't even know what they are doing. If you clear them, they will say, "Oh, we are sorry," or we don't even know. So all of us are victim of this thing. So mm -hmm. if we, if there is a way to make this enlightenment go far or go wider, go in the street on the grassroots, because the problem is from the domestic is from right from home, sir, right from the home to the to the village to the or. To extended circles. So, if there is a way to take this message, get to the people, that's the most important thing. Because you guys are saying sense. 
or it's not getting to the people that are supposed to use them. That's just it. So more uh, this thing, uh, strategy should be uh, maybe employed or brought up or uh, you know invented to take this thing, uh, take it to the streets, take it to the people, let the people get to know these things, hear them, listen to them, or if there's a way to share this thing. Because me, I was so happy, so excited hearing this thing. Thank I you. swear I'm so I'm tired of all these things. I'm tired. Let's get things working, please. Thank Let's get you, things amazing. working. I'm so happy. And uh, let me conclude by thanking all of you guys. Everybody there, you guys are awesome from A to Z. Everybody is wonderful. Everybody is wonderful. Thank you, thank my you brother. So Catch you thank, you. So thank you. We'll keep on fighting because of people like you. We will keep on fighting. You are our okay. son. You are our brother. You are our nephew. You we you have to the same way American men when they wake up in the morning they will enjoy, enjoy good things. That is the way our people must enjoy good things. We're not gonna wait till we get to heaven. To we want that heaven on earth. This is heaven. This is I, I, I don't earth. think there is any other heaven. If so. if this is the heaven we have to make. This is the heaven we have to make. Let's live in heaven here first, like others, and then get to the next level again, the, uh, next heaven, right. after this heaven. Please. Thank oh, you. Thank I, you. Thought I, I really appreciate you. What's your name again? She may say, my, name is, you know, my, name. my husband's name. Oh, gosh. <laughs> 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 and, uh, you, you know, you actually brought tears to our eyes uh, because the, the way you you really really spoke eloquently, and that shows that you know I, I'm sure this is not your what you your real intention or what you really, really wanted to be to be selling phones. I'm sure probably you have some um, yes, educational yeah, yeah. you know background yeah. level. I'm a graduate. But, I'm a graduate. I but, yeah, yeah, graduate. I, yeah. I could I could see that. So the truth about it is that help is already at the corner. Help is here. We just want people like you. You are asking how do we disseminate this information? If you know how best you can do it to so probably compact it in little, little, or even the, a word of mouth, if you can start That's what I do. I do that. I do that sometimes. Home, that there is no point carrying that flag and going on the street and getting killed. There is no point for that. What LNC is doing, we are almost, look, it is a 16 stage, um, 16 step method of which they are at the 14th stage right now. They've been doing it for the past 20 years, 21 years, if not for this coronavirus, something that is very, very imminent, is supposed to happen as at February would have happened. And that would bring the downfall of that country called Nigeria. So I want you to understand that help is at the corner. So the, uh, the essence of you guys listening to one buffoon in his uh, little uh, uh, whatever on radio telling people to go out there and get killed. Why he gets paid for telling you to go out there and get killed? And his deputy telling you that all road leads to his father. I know all those kind of nonsense. The reason why we bring them up once in a while is that we want you all to know that help is not coming from that side. They are not the people that are there to help you. They are only there to continue to get money from you. So I phone the little that you have. So if you have that opportunity to go out there and tell our people that help is almost here, if you can do that, then, I mean, the, the job is almost half done. So don't worry. We are getting it. We are, the U.S. Is, is involved already. Don't mind what this other guy is saying. The U.S. is involved. So just understand that help is very, very close by. All right, thank, thank you. you. Can I add a little bit? Yes. Because okay. we are talking about power to the people. Power to the people. We are returning power to the people. This is our project, the people. So the market women, if you just take one of our clip, go and play in the market, you are already sensitizing them. The motor park people, that's all we need to do. We have to do this job ourselves. Nobody is doing it. Nobody. If you call yourself a Christian, you're going to church, know that you are part of your assignment is to make sure that you're enjoying freedom, you're enjoying the kingdom of God here, that's why Christ died, and that others around you are enjoying the same thing. That is what Christianity means. Thank you so much, my brother. We, are, we love you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Jimmy. Thank you so much. Please, uh, our other people that are coming in, um, I know we keep saying make, make it snappy, and we ourselves are dragging it to another level. <laughs> so... Um, well, I just got them. We have just three. We'll just take the calls from these three people and be done. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, 
with your phones when you call. Mazino, you can go ahead your own, please. Okay, because from these three people and it's done. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, please mute your listening device, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let me mute my listening. Um, can you hear me very well? Can you hear me well? Yes, you're good. You're good. Go ahead. Good, good. Thank you. Um, thank you so very much. You are doing a great job. I got a text message from uh, an IPOB member, and I had to bring IPOB into this, but uh, I came to the conclusion that the biggest problem LNC is having is that there is a, an info, uh, there's a misinformation war against the messaging of the LNC. And uh, that uh, misinformation war is coming from none other than IPOB. Somebody sent me this information. And uh, it was about what happened last year. It was about uh, a broadcast from uh, the supreme leader of the uh, indigenous people of Biafra. And in that message, I found it funny because it was so, if I didn't laugh about it, I would probably get angry because it was just designed for a very gullible mind. And it was about what happened last year here in the United States when uh, LMC came over here and um, did the work that was done to get to the executive order. Somebody had called in and asked a question, and uh, Mazin Namdekano told them that uh, it was work that IPOB did here, the work that, he, that it was work that he did here in the US that led to the Trump executive order. And uh, I thought about it, I said, my goodness, you were in IPOB last year, some part of last year, was IPOB doing anything at that point? Nada. That could have led to nada. Nada. Nothing, nada, nothing. nada. Nada, 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 nada. We were collecting okay. money from street to street. Yes, because I do remember even before he left the United States, he was interviewed by Iroko TV. And they asked him about what he was doing and what he was uh, going to do. He talked about this march in Washington that was going to take place the next year. There was no reference to anything in Washington, any diplomatic, there was any none. There was none. There was none. Mm. Yes. And then there's all this reference to talk with senators and congressmen. No evidence. It, no evidence, nothing. No. We were but, with him. No, it did not happen. It did not it happen. happen. No, none of it. No. And then he was talking about uh, this uh, special envoy. And I found that so He doesn't funny. even know what special means. Yeah. Special envoy means. Envoy. <laughs> and, yes, yeah. because as I as I looked at the uh, special envoy, I remember the January 17th speech by uh, presentation by Tony Nadi at okay. the Washington Press Club, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, where he talked. Frank Gaffney was there, uh, Congressman Wolf was there, okay. and he made this amazing presentation at the Washington Press Club. He mentioned the uh, special envoy. Yeah. Then then Frank Gaffney invited him to the uh, radio uh, interview. And uh, when Frank Gaffney asked him what uh, he wanted, what uh, he would want uh, America to do, he said, special envoy. Mm -hmm. Frank Gaffney himself made speeches after that where he talked about the special envoy for Nigeria, Nigeria and the lectured basin. Yeah. So there was all this reference to special envoy, special envoy, special envoy. And then they met in Washington during the congressional roundtables in June and July, June 5th in the House of Representatives, June 11th, in the Senate, I studied this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, July 16th, uh, the uh, state, in, uh, state Department event in Washington. In all those events, there was reference to special envoy. And uh, you looked at everything, the pictures were taken, and these are in the public domain. Mm -hmm. There was no Ndamdekano anywhere in those pictures. Nada. There was no activity by him, nothing. Nothing, we absolutely we, nothing. We couldn't even. We hosted him here in Houston and invited people, spent almost $10,000 to host him. Wanted to meet with those people to energize them and tell them what we're trying to do. He said, No, you must not meet. You should yes. divide them street by street so they can go and collect money. That was our strategy. I was, we don't want to waste our time on, <laughs> on entity. We are mothers. Look at our son, Chime. 
Look at how smart he is. Look at what this uh, Cato Republic has reduced him uh, to. Yes. Those are the th yes. those are the things why we are doing what we are doing. We're not here to be yes. your friends. We're not here to be your leader, your coordinator, your whatever you want. We are mothers wanting more for yes. their children. So, exactly. Basi, please exactly. wrap it up. We have other people here so that we can uh, give them time. Uh, okay. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for your okay. time. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you for the great work yeah, that you're he, doing. He wasn't part of it. And that's why we did this show to reiterate what our brother. The worst part of it. How are you taking credit for something that you. Can you stay in your lane? He had, can he had absolutely the, nothing the to do with it. Absolutely and stay in your nothing. Lane? I started Not this. Nada. Thing. Thank you, Mazi. Nada. Nada. We can we are with you. We were with him. We were with him. No, it was with Trisu. Okay. I can remember that very well. Galaxy, Galaxy A. Was it was not near Washington. Nada. Nah, please, your I'm name not lying about that. Your name and uh, where you're calling from. Galaxy. Actually, uh, yeah, Galaxy A80, I think. Or meet yourself, sir. The guy with the uh, earpiece. I think I've done it now. Okay, please make uh, it snappy. We have yeah. like two people. I, I don't, I don't know your time zone there, but here yeah, is good evening. I'm calling from uh, Oslo, Norway. Welcome. Yeah, it's good evening. This is, this is around there. Um, yeah. Uh, I sincerely thank you for you for what you guys are doing for us. Your name, uh, your name, please. It's important. Uh, I'm Emeka Chukwu Emeka Jerry Echiru. I'm from Ehiman, but not to be precise. Uh, let's let's not talk about the IPOB and the uh, of uh, their style of uh, so-called freedom fighting. Uh, yet they are doing a great job for us. But in a way, it's like a child with so much love for his people, and um, he got to be the hero of his people, and. Um, if you are not careful in the way or the process you go in becoming that hero, you might commit crime against that your people. Mm -hmm. That's what exactly like POB is doing, exactly what the camera is doing. A tree can never make a forest. That's never been. Especially when you fail to listen to people. Everybody can easily make a mistake. Every leader can make a mistake. But when you fail to listen, then you are doomed to fail before you even started. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what is going because the guy refused to listen. But let's not talk about it. So right, executive we'll, order today. Executive order, much, guys. Much of our much of our time. Right. Uh, but but as we move forward, it requires building partnerships and adapting to new circumstances, remaking ourselves to meet the challenges of our time. How are we connecting with the people at home, especially like uh, an organization like uh, ADF? Ohaneze, I don't talk too much about Ohaneze because Ohaneze was formed immediately after the Civil War, immediately after the collapse of the uh, Eastern region. And then Ohaneze was formed to be able to keep our people together. But today, almost close to six decades, nothing, no one single thing, Ohaneze can point a finger that this is our achievement. So we are in a very deep, great mess than we thought, far deeper than we thought. So what we are saying is how possible can we put ourselves together and be able to galvanize our people, not to run a race alone, and like ADF, uh, 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 Mrs. I don't know how possible because my number is there. Maybe you can message me or something. I would like to link you with, like Professor Mala, the president of ADF, so we can be that is an organization. I'm a member of ADF, or an organization, something we are planning to do, uh, which is um, the the primary foundation of ADF, Akurolo, meaning. Try to bring, identify our people who are in various places, who are captains of industries, who are engineers, who are doing well in, in, in different organizations or different fields there. Be able to identify them and bring them together because those people constitute natural resources. Those are human resources scattered all over the world because we have no country at this moment. That's why they're scattered. And those people are the blessings God gave 
to develop Igbo land, to make us proud at home. But instead of it, they are make if they are useful for another country because our leaders also fell in recognizing them bringing them together try to form a good and better society how possible can we do that ma is it possible we can swallow our pride and be able to connect with people at home especially adf and then we can be able to work together if it's case uh, to invite them over sometimes we can invite them over or to go home, sometimes we can nominate someone who can go home and see how we can be able to salvage ourselves, put ourselves together. Because the truth is, we have no country. We have no place to go. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, much. Uh, my Thank brother. You, yeah, we appreciate you. And um, we are in touch with all the people that we need to be in touch. LNC is like a congregation of all freedom fighters that are genuinely fighting for our people. So we're already in touch with the people. And um, like, but we said before that for every challenge, there is an appropriate response. Every person can be making some uh, responses, but there's one that is appropriate. And if you get the appropriate response, you get the appropriate results. Having said that, the problem we have is not really economic problem. We appreciate the effort ADF is making is an economic solution, but we're having a terrorism problem. So we need security. Now we said in software videos that this problem did not start today, that the jihadists started from up here and coming down. They have conquered this north. You now have Sharia belt here. They, have, they are now in middle belts killing them. Last week, we showed um, a video and all the, the representative, uh, 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 representative from here showing us how they're dying, what is going on to them. And here, Middle Belt is the gateway to the South. When they finish killing Middle Belt and taking it over, they will come here. So no matter what you build here, it will be taken. Do you understand, my brother? So that's the danger we are in. But we appreciate those that are trying to build things here. It's okay, you go ahead. But we might not join in what you're doing because you're distracting what we are doing. Somebody said IPOB has done a great work. No, they've not done a great work. They've, what they've done is in destroying what we are doing. You are working, you have a project in your hand. Like It's like farming. You know, like when you're farming, those are farm yam. Where we come from, we farm yam. You're molding the thing so that you can sow yam. Somebody is scattering the mold. As you're making the big mold so that it will be big enough for you to put the yam. Because if you make it small, the yam will not survive. So you're trying to make it very big and you're struggling bringing this thing together so that you can put yam for you to start growing. Somebody is scattering the mold. How is that person helping you? So but we don't want to go into that. And that's why we're saying you want to concentrate on executive order so that our people will understand what has been done. Because if you understand it, you will know that everybody might not be helping you in what you're doing. And you begin to know who is helping you. And by the way, we say alliance has been formed. This is alliance. Those that we're not working alone. This alliance started from here. All the indigenous peoples here, you say, I hear I said peoples. It's not indigenous people. Indigenous peoples. Here, they form alliance in lower Niger area. Now, that they form alliance with Yoruba people, form alliance with Middle Belt, against these Sharia belts. And we are at the final phase of it. Thank you so much. Our videos are there for those that want to understand more what we're doing so that they can come in. Understand? Thank you. Ma Maz, unfortunately, we will not be able to take any more. Uh, we have uh, Mazi, Perry, and Yang we're waiting for a while. We really have to conclude so that this video is not too long for those that really want to hear what we did today. So, Mazi Perry, let me unmute you. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Please make okay. it snappy. Thank you. Yeah, um, I'm very grateful. Thank you, um, you all, for wonderful work you are doing. And I'll be brief uh, because you are using a very wonderful strategy. I believe a community or society is built from family to religion, religion to um, education. And then when they are molded in a perfect form, they form a society, a peaceful one. Mm -hmm. 
And the strategy you are using here is so wonderful because if we don't go on this platform or this plan to wage war, block those areas the enemies will come in, there is nothing we can do. Ibo says that Onye uh, Chereche is just like a dead person. Mm -hmm. That is the reason why in all the forums I try to go in, I tell them the first thing we have to reconcile ourselves, among ourselves. Because the politicians use the strategy of Europeans um, divide and rule. Our problem is a kind of a system, European system, divide and rule. And it has been going on and on and on. This system is a system they use to bring our uh, representatives down. When they come and say, okay, what do we need to do? Bring them in, is in our caucus. They give you what they want and bring you down. The system keeps on surviving. So um, I listened to, I had a problem with a French uh, uh, journalist, French too, where they are criticizing that uh, Igbos are rich, Igbos are this, Igbos are, I address them, as, I will still address them next week. Because they are being bribed to use French. I schooled in Paris, I stayed many days, and then I, I, I was in politics. I was in politics in the European Union, a councillor in Italy for so many years before I'm, I'm here in the United States. So I follow international. You are following the strategy. The second thing that moves is that we have to stop European, through European communities, stop them from receiving people banking with them. All those bankers, all those banks, institutions have to be in control by the European community, which I will address in Italian language, in uh, French language and Dutch. They have to be because they see Nigerians as slaves in Europe. Mm -hmm. But not knowing that they are the one causing this, we have to stop them. Here I'm advising all Nigerians in America has to participate politically and tell the people this is what we want. We want them to step in and then make sure that we have equality in the constitution. That every child, are you ours, are you Yoruba, are you, but whatever tribe you are, you live comfortably because we have no economic problem. This is, we are being enslaved in a system that we need to be conscious of this system and the fight the system and not the people. So 99% of us are fighting the people, but that is not where our problem lies. We have 44,860 something fake contracts awarded within 15 years ago in Nigeria. Mm. And there have been partners with unsatisfied contractors that is not identified even in the European Union. So we have private investigators who have to look into these problems right away. What happened? Why did Pamalat, after having contract with Nigeria, Pamalat ended up within three months? Today, Pamalat is on. But Nigeria, an individual president in Nigeria bought Pamalat. After which they said Pamalat is gone, but it's back. That is trillions of dollars of United of this. Akumafo was taken away from Italy as a uh, as as as, as, a, as a, um, a, a, a ambassador because they know that he will refute what is going on. So I will be brief. Let there be reconciliation among these particular ethnic groups that surround us, and then we move to a constitution that will identify and point out the right of every citizen, the right of every tribe, the right of every state. And then, remember that 99% of the customs we have in Nigeria are not Nigerians. The, all those people you see in the borders are not Nigerians. They speak Aousas and Yorubas. And then, refer me now to um, American embassy, European embassies, all the whole Arab Emirates, comes into Nigeria, get fair contract, submit their documents and have a visa, come into Europe, come to the this is the reasons why we are telling America to wake up. We are telling Europeans to wake up because they want to form Nigeria as a central point for them to move easily. A mechanic from Saudi Arabia, from Lebanon, comes to Nigeria, become an engineer with his Arab language and get visa and come out. Even Chinese. <laughs> Even Chinese. So what I'm trying to let you know here is that if you follow up what is going, you will find out that we are really messed up. Today, now, presently, as we are, 
some countries have started proposing to Nigeria buy loans. That means enslaving you, whatever you buy, whatever you sell, you buy from them and sell to them. And they are going to give us uh, another foreign aid. Foreign aid plus a uh, loan tie. We are gone. We are finished. And where is these sources are coming from? From the eastern region. So we have to protect a way whereby they should stop the flow of oil money. T cell is gaining ground to work without fuel. Therefore, it's coming down. If we fail to reactivate our importation routes, seaport in east, airport in east, and oil comes down, where are we? Even if we liberate, we are going nowhere. So please let us, I'm happy immediately women step in any situation is always solved. This is a, this has been my belief. So for you, I'm so much impressed and I pray for you all coming up with this particular forum, bringing it to a point of reconciliation because with peace, you can achieve whatever you want to achieve. Then another problem we have, those who are supposed to receive this message, you are passing they are nowhere in position to do so. Problem of communication is there. No news, no television, no, just they are frustrated. They are, all their hope and their faith is on us. Let nobody get tired until you get to the uh, bottom of this liberation. If the Igbos or the Southerners want to go, where and to who do we abandon the houses who are Christians to? Then another point is, Christianity and religion. Let me tell you the Ma truth. Ma Ma I'm so I'm so I'm, I'm rounding up. I'm rounding up. So. <laughs> now religion has done harm to Nigeria. In Vatican, that is the head of Christianity. Igbos are there. Nigerians are the top people. What have they said? What have they done? No. Nothing. nothing. We are bringing nothing. I lived in Rome. 16 good years so i'm talking with reference take my name anywhere google it you see it is live i'm not hiding i'm not just, what what have they done mm -hmm. the evils should withdraw themselves from all this problem of religion concentrate let us focus and realize what we want to realize god bless you all i'm grateful god oh, bless you my brother can i say one or two things you know please okay um we appreciate you you know why we because i don't know how where you started joining us because uh part of the work the alliance we are talking about you know and they we have formed the alliance is coming together against this sharia belt all these problems you enumerated are the, what is empowering them is the constitution the 1999 constitution right. because they have something that they're working through is that constitution that closed our seaports is calculation all the problems everybody mentioned is that constitution so we have carried this message to america and america agree and they're part of what we're doing so okay. now we are trying to uh, tell our people the local initiative like it was saying to explain to our people what has been done at the international scene um lnc broke down the work they did have intra-regional cohesion which they, it took six years to accomplish that's to get all the people in this region here come on board. To come together. Mm -hmm. so then from there they have inter-regional cohesion that's working with yorubas and working the, with a, a middle belt that took four years to that's get right. Now they move to what you call international imperative to now go and take because we understand that our land we have investors. America invested in our land, European, all of them, they have assets in our land. We don't want to pass a message as if we want to create anarchy. So we carry them along to understand what we are trying to do. That this is what the issue is. And That's if right. you check out also other videos that we've had. You see the people we are working with in uh, in America, and most of them are Christians. You know, they are uh, act Christian activists. Of course, there's a difference between mere religion and true Christianity. Oh, true Christianity is about freedom of the people, not just freedom for the Christians, freedom for all human race. Right. You know, so whatever you're practicing, keep it at your personal level. Do not kill another man because of what you believe in or what you're practicing. So we want our people to have. Uh, religious freedom so that's why the act of 1998 in american act it said international religious freedom act of 1998 by frank wolf frank wolf pushed that thing and he, he, he now reactivated it so now they're using that to step into the situation of nigeria coming to defend the christians that are being killed and 
we are all working together we just, we, on this platform what we are doing is to explain to people like you that even understand what is going on to see what the level of what has been achieved and the little that we need to finish up the project and also we also because it's a human is people's project the people not the politicians the people we will not sell it to our people the market women is our responsibility not the daughters of truth alone everyone all of us to multiple people everyone this is what we have to do together so the next step is constitutional force major bring down that constitution which has killed all of us has empowered the terrorists against us and then we'll do the next thing that we need to do thank you very much okay thank you you're welcome thank, thank you, you Mazia, uh, Nyangu. thank you so sisters i don't know if you guys understand what snappy means between us and our viewers <laughs> <laughs> snappy means two minutes sometimes when you are to I know, I know. snappy the I important know. information will not go out yeah. and here we are here to explain very well right. so that the person that brain died the brain might begin to receive life <laughs> you are so right sister i was just trying Thank to you. make sure okay mr okenwa and anike anike uh against his you can unmute yourself uh, please make it really, really make it snappy because uh, we have two more people and we don't want this video to be too long. Uh, I think it's okay when it's not there. What about Vivo 1906? Your name and where you're calling from? Vivo Hello, 1906. Uh, your video. Can you hear me? Yes. Your Am I coming picture, out there? Picture, picture, please. please Vivo. Picture. Vivo, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Where's your yeah, video? But we need your picture. We need to see. Oh, it's my. Is my picture not showing? Can't you see me? No. We can't see you. Oh, that is problem then. Okay, go ahead. Why can't Let's make you quick. Your name and where you're calling from. Uh, my name is uh, Kachi Goswil. Uh, I'm from Omaha. I'm calling from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Okay. Uh, please, I just have only one question. Okay. I don't. Uh, I don't want to take your time. Just one question. One or two questions. Uh, Make it one. Everybody right. is entitled to their view. Right. Uh, I listen to you. Uh, I listen to you, mothers, uh, and I understand that uh, you are on the part of NNC. There is no problem about that. Now, my question is: I have something uh, bothering me. Go ahead. Go ahead. On your opinion, on your opinion, IPOP is doing nothing. IPOP have no ground in US. That's your own opinion. Now, it, it bothered me when sometime two months ago, or I think last uh, last month, I don't know, two months ago, the presidency of Nigeria um, made this sister, name. Sister, and I please, think, please, I think uh, Kachi Vivo, Vivo 1906. If you cannot show us your video, we... Because, oh, no, because look, you are trying to take us back. You are trying to take us no, back. No, I want to ask a question. No, no, no. The question you are asking is very no, irrelevant. No, 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 so no, 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 let me see no, you. Okay. All right. So let's move on. Let me see you. No because I'm actually doing Try to focus our topic today on the, I mean, your question today on our topic. Why you see them going around the circle? You see that they're looking for how to enter and. So, you yeah, don't know that there's uh, no point. ASUSX009, you're on. Please, your name, focus today. Unmute yourself. Actually, I can unmute you. Focus your question today on what we discussed about is the executive order uh, that Donald Trump signed on June 2nd of 2020. So, if you have any comment on that, this is a good time. You know, comment, concern, questions. Um, uh, let's be snappy about that so that we can end the show. Thank you. Go ahead. Your name and where you're calling from. Hello. Yes, can you turn on your video, sir? Okay, uh, I'm trying to do that. Yeah, if you look at the bottom of your phone, the camera icon, just click on it, it will uncheck it and your video will come up. Okay, okay, okay. Am I online? Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, um, good evening from here. Um, good evening. My name is, yeah, my name is Maxwell. Um, I'm from Delta State. Okay. Yeah. Um. I don't. I don't have much to say. Just that uh, I have an appeal to make. Okay. Yeah. At first, uh, I love your program. I have uh, engaged uh, was with um, Tony. Tony, not day one on one. Uh, 
I appreciate his view. I appreciate uh, other organizations like uh, Wazilike and that of uh, IPOB. I'm not a member of anyone. But uh, I am a dear friend because I have dear friends with inside me. My peers go this way that uh, uh, I want, uh, I wish, I am wishing if every individual organization can be operating the way, of, the way they are operating right now without attacking any other organization. I still believe, I still believe in, in future, as they are going in future, the need for them to come together Mas, we are right. Mas, I don't think you heard me earlier. I said your questions should surround our topic today and uh, you're off the okay, topic Okay, again. okay, okay. So I'm, I'm very questions. sorry. I'm very sorry that uh, I joined I joined late. Okay. I joined late. Okay, you can watch oh, the video. Oh, go to our videos. Uh, mm. So, so sorry. Uh, we really want to move on. We really want to do what works. Do you see our son, Chime Zie, as smart as that boy is? Do you see where he found himself? Our goal is to make sure he's able to get married when he's supposed to get married. He's supposed to get a job when he's supposed to get a job. He's supposed to live a good life when he's supposed to good life. We are not here to to dance to the tone of men, organizational parties, and all that no, stuff. No. Our children's no, future are in danger. Umwani are in danger. We sell our last wrapper. We sell our last gold. Send our young people to school, and instead they will end up with prostitution or Yahoo Yahoo boys. When they are it's enough, true. they are smart enough to be build a NASA, an astronautical space here in in our in our uh, in our area, and instead we have reduced them to either Hannah Yak or Hannah on Facebook or Hannah May him on We are sick of it. We are sick of. We really want to move on. We are looking for men that are thinkers, not react uh, 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 reactors. Reactors, yeah. Yeah, yes. we yes. need reactors, to think. Yeah. We just say, we think yeah, right. all yeah. Work. We are not here to look at yeah, anybody's right. face. Don't look at my face. I need the work done fast, fast. Fast, fast. And, yeah, right. and right. we don't yeah. want to be emotional. We don't yeah, want right. to be sentimental. Yeah, right. We yeah, want right. to get yeah. this yeah, thing right. done fast, fast. And anybody playing games with the lives of our children will suffer. Including me. Including me. Everybody playing with the life of our children will suffer. It's a matter of time. That's all we can give you. It's true. It's true. It's true. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Ma Anna Anike, we need to go. Your your name and where you're calling from, if that's your real name. Okay, Ma. I think okay, Ma is gone. So let's call it a day. Since that's your um your ending uh conclusion. I'm, I'm so upset with all these people think that we're here to play. We are telling you that any day that we do not get these things done, it's another day for our people to die. Are you talking about Mediterranean Sea? Are you talking about prostitution? Are you talking about babies that they give birth and throw in the toilet and throw across the fence? Are you talking about atrocities upon atrocities? Are you guys are thinking it's about some idiot or some, or some woman or man or whoever? You guys don't even understand where we are going. You don't understand where we are going as mothers. That you are wasting our time with this politics that you're playing. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Emotional politics. Sisters, yeah. Yes, please, your ending uh, statement so we can go. Yeah, thank you so much, Sister Mona, and thank you, our viewers, you know, for tuning in today. Uh, we also thank Mazi Tony Nadeido. He had to go to other meetings. That's to tell you how busy he is. Uh, you know, he has to go to other meetings. And I also thank those that listened, that called in. Uh, today we discussed the executive order that uh, President Trump signed. And what led to that executive order? It's so important that you all understand where we have gotten to. You understand? Let us stop being emotional, as uh, Sister Muna rightly said. We are not here to joke with anybody. We are not here to become your Lord or Savior or Pastor or whatever. We are not interested in that. We're interested in our freedom. And this freedom that will transcend, the freedom that would, uh, that would affect everybody. That is what we are all about. And I just want to put this out there that it was as a result of the work of the LSC was as a result of the work of the LSC that made Donald Trump to actually think about a special envoy. Remember, it was Madison that suggested a special envoy. So do not get it twisted. When we have the rogue, uh, 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 the rogue franchise, Namdekano claiming that it was his work that made, Mas, uh, the, that made the executive order to take place, we have to discredit because you cannot go and be taking somebody else's work and use it as your own. And he's saying that uh, they spend roughly hundred thousand dollars every hundred thousand dollars every month to lobby 
he has not called who he has been lobbying and him saying that he has met with some uh some uh senators and some house of representative door before you meet a senator here in the united states you have to be vetted they have to vet you and as with the united states their level of vetting of nam they cannot they know him as a rogue as a forward man as a fraud star we have to say this it has to come out so as a fraud star you cannot meet with any body you cannot meet with any senator you cannot meet with any house of rep you cannot meet with anybody so the the, the secretary of state has has to vet you they have to work on you they have to run your life history to know that you are worth it and the idea that he has been to the congressional building duh i have a lot of pictures when i went there anybody can go there <laughs> he has been to the white house duh i have another one i was in front of the white house anybody can go there it is free you all you need to do at that photo you go and you go in front of that place you take a picture it is so free so do not get it twisted this guy has not done anything he's only taking credit for things he hasn't done this is the work of the lnc and the eminent allies and the christians that were persecuted the pictures are out there so do not give start out because the guy is trying to wash the brains of our people and our people don't understand that he's just making money for himself and his family that is what he is doing he is pushing our people to their debts and making money in the process so why Mazitoni was out there June July of last year and it was in Houston June of last year so do not allow that we want to you want to it is so now me me and sister mona now we cook the sweet chop so we just want to understand that we so we it will was with us so you you can't be in Washington at the same time while you were here so the guy is a bump is a liar is a it's he it, is it, just trying to mess up what the good work that nnc has done for years that's what he's trying to do and we're not going to allow him we are not going to allow him so i thank you all for listening the pathway we are so close we are so close we are waiting on the constitutional force major that is imminent and for the very last time you do not need nas the national assembly in nigeria to give you your freedom you don't need this for those that keep misinterpreting because you can speak go 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 you but you think you understand you do not we the people are the people that will set ourselves free the national assembly members are our employ we are the one that employed them to work for us not the other way around you see how senators here have been recalled at the slightest provocation they recall them you understand if nigeria was working all those idiots would have been recalled times with that number so do not think that they, you are working they, they are working for you they are working for us so they do not have the right to change the constitution and for the last time the lnc is not for constitutional amendments hell no you all keep bringing that that Tony Nabi is, is carrying my up and down no they cannot be carrying red up and down and yet he hasn't given you the effort <laughs> so Tony Nabi carrying my up and down is trying to tell you that this is the pathway and the pathway is following the protocol that is stipulated by united nations if you cannot get this then you have a blockhead we cannot help you you need to go and do fasting and prayer to see if you cannot block your head because you cannot help me at this stage you cannot help yourself so our people please 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 we are on track very much on track if not for the covid oh you'll be hearing a different story and we're watching landy he can never never take credit for the first major he, 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 because he's a thief, only oh, no, a big one, oh, Jabuja. he's a Jabuja, he wants to take things that do not belong to him. He wants to tomorrow say, oh, I brought you Biafra. No, he's not getting you Biafra. He is not getting you Biafra. He has no people on ground working in the United States. We were his coordinators, we know this. He's a, he's a national coordinator, he's one old man that sleeps 24 hours, hasn't met nobody. Okoro, he has not met anybody. So do not get it twisted. He can't even meet local Marvel meet international. So no, he, nobody is working for him. He doesn't have anybody anywhere. The pathway is this pathway and it's the LSC pathway. Thank you all and join us next week.
Thank you, sister. Sister, if we please. Your Thank you so up. much, sister Augusta. You've said it all that time. I don't even have anything to add anymore. <laughs> because God is beautiful in the way he does his things. If we were not within Namdi and he's saying all these lies, we'd say maybe it's true. But we're there in our QOB. And that's why we even left. There was nothing going on. We are trying to get church. We give them all the ideas and everything. We get the, uh, get the church involved. I have to meet uh, all these powerful church members. Uh, we have to meet this congress. We will, there's a time that money was assembled to go and meet uh, some congress and all that. They, they scattered the money. They, they take back. There was nothing that you told them to do that they did. Every, they ruined everything. And that's why we said this thing cannot give our people freedom. We need to move from here. How will you not turn around and say it's you? No, no, I just stop all those things. So, thank you, my sisters. Thank you, viewers. We appreciate you. We want to leave you with one message. Everybody is not solving your problem. Just like you sitting there eating a bowl of apple cannot get you pregnant as a woman. Everything is not solution to your problem. For every challenge, that for every human challenge, you have appropriate solution appropriate response you need to find it so everybody that is doing everything some might be providing food for you that's okay eat your food some might be giving you some things but everybody is not following the un protocol and will follow it and through lnc they have following they're following the step by step and that's what we're telling you please watch other videos that we have so that you'll be in tune with what is happening um, we know that uh, I think some Hanese is going some through some restructuring. We have our brother Daifani trying to organize them and put their head to the direction that it should go. So we appreciate people like that. We appreciate leaders, market leaders, motor park, all the things that you're doing. The, there's another group, the traditional, like uh, all these um, villages, the national, um, how do they call it? They are president of progressive union, unions and all that. So they're all also being educated in those things. So when the leaders understand, they will not go and teach their people. They're having all sorts of retreats. That's what they had in Atabakaliki. And also we can't come and be telling you all the details, but these things are going on. And we're encouraging more people to get into, if you're a market woman, a market leader, woman, women leader, listen to what they're saying so they can go and explain to your people. If you are a Metal Park leader, listen to what I'm saying so that you can go and play our video to our, our people and explain to them. If you are a pastor, if you are a church leader, women le church leader, women leaders in the church, listen to what we're saying so that you can understand it and teach your people. They do not need to die anymore. Help is here, like Sister Augusta has said. Thank you so much, our people. See you next week. Thank you, sisters. We'll see you guys next week and we'll continue to say what we say. We are the mothers and we are here to make sure that things are done right for the future of our children. So you can continue to get it twisted. You can continue to call names. We are on a mission and nothing can stop us, including your comments.